if everything goes right. I got you want to set your recording. I'm recording mine at my okay. end. Right. I'm just <clears throat> recording always. So as usual, I'm depending. Oh, you're on recording your, always. Your, your side. Yeah. So <laughs> in any case, uh, why, why don't we just start because we're recording anyway, and right. uh, people can join. Right. Um, so. Hmm? One, oh, okay, I'll send a note. I'm going to send a chat. Okay. I won't get recorded. Well, chat will be there for people too. <laughs> Audre is a stickler for transparency. Everything should be available, posted online for anybody. Great. Well, Bruce, Bruce may be calling from St. Petersburg, Russia. And if he does, I'm going to take, I'll just leave this and take the call elsewhere. <laughs> Okie doke. <laughs> Talking about uh, fake news in St. Petersburg. How's that for a trip? <laughs> they could probably use some of this stuff in St. Petersburg. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So the CDCs, I, I was just reading your, your reply email. Um, it, it is true that the constitutional draft bill is, is more hybrid. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it says um, basically around half, I think of um, the, the bottom-up uh, constitutional uh, thing uh, is statistically, randomly, uh, but representatively uh, driven. Uh, but the other parts uh, are from the uh, legislators uh, and one uh, from all the indigenous tribes. So there are three um, constitutional components um, and all around it's 146 people, uh, mm -hmm. where the indigenous people are six, uh, the legislators are 35, and every, everything else uh, is um, randomly <clears throat> sampled. Uh -huh. And so, uh -huh. so it is a hybrid. Yeah, yeah. but it's very close, and it has, it's a, does have a kind of uh, stakeholder because they're putting the, the legislators who are big, are the legislators going to be ultimately deciding this? This is this is to inform legislation. Is that this what the is, council is? Um, so, so no. <laughs> this is to this is to bind uh, the legislation so that because Taiwan has a extremely high threshold for constitutional change, uh, it first has to pass I think three quarter. Uh, in a parliament for any amendment to go through. Uh, and then it has to pass a general referendum-ish vote. And so um, the idea is that by involving um, everyone from the legislative as well as from the citizen assembly, um, it, there's much more chance for the result, whatever the result is, to pass through the uh, very high threshold that was there to begin with. Right, so it's not binding and it's not merely informative, it's working towards the high chance of both the public and the parliament passing it. That's correct. Uh, and uh, and uh, because it, it can't override the constitution itself uh, for how, how high the threshold from the parliament uh, is needed to change it. Uh, but yeah, so, so uh, I, I suppose the designer of this this uh, bootstrapping constitution reform law, imagine that one of the binding, um, or not quite binding, but hopefully binding in the end resolution will be to lower the threshold for constitutional change. That, that's, that's just how it's uh -huh. designed. Yeah. Right. And this is, this is similar in a sense to the um, Iceland, uh, Ireland constitutional thing, which did have legislators and, and uh, citizens involved in mm -hmm. it. So this is this is like doing doing your exercises prior to doing the high jump. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, it explicitly <laughs> cites the uh, British Columbia, Ireland, South Africa, and Iceland uh, as its inspirations. Uh -huh. so to speak. Uh -huh. Interesting. So Br the British Columbia one didn't have any legislators in it. It was pure pure citizens. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so just to, to make it clear, yeah, it's like okay, this, yeah, so. Uh, yeah, in right, a funny so. way, 
Well, this is this is this is similar in the in the what's not there is the back and forth between the parliament. I'm just thinking about the way V Taiwan operates in the, mm -hmm. in the um, well, regular regulatory realm. There's a mm -hmm. lot of work goes on, which includes both the stakeholders and the regulators in mm -hmm. creating stuff, and then the regulation is is drafted and sent back to mm -hmm. the process to be worked over. So it'd be nice if the if the constitutional this constitutional right, uh, back and forth a few times between Yes, the, yes. So this example. is this is Article nine. Uh, and so Google Translate I think does a pretty good um, idea of translating it anyway. But uh, just the, the high level summary, uh, the Article 14 says that uh, from the beginning of this process, within two months, there needs to be a blueprint uh, meeting. Uh, and the blueprint meeting is to, to set the, the scope, the agenda, the, the uh -huh. um, process of it. And then uh, it, it, the blueprint needs to have this F2F component as well as uh, online component. Uh, and then, um, then from these people um, about, so the blueprint meeting is for everyone. There's several rounds. And then 15 people from this larger assembly, so about one tenth of it, is then selected as the drafting, drafting uh, team, uh, in which the citizen must not be less than uh, two thirds. So um, at least uh, six people, uh, sorry, nine people, uh, no, 10 people ten are people. from, yeah, 10 people are from, are directly from here. Uh, it doesn't say about indigenous nations. So mm -hmm. anyway, so that that's the idea. And then, then it uh, translates the rough or broad consensus from the blueprint meetings uh, and then starts, well, uh, one regional meeting at least uh, per county or city. That's about 20 or so, 20 oh. to 30 um, regional meetings. Uh, and... Um, and finally, there is a, a general assembly-ish meeting that takes the the round trip um, meetings. Here are the regional ones um, back to the to the assembly here for the final uh, binding <coughs> synthesis. Yeah, so so that's the general blueprint. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. That had, there's a lot of stuff from the British Columbia thing in there. I know, recognize. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, this is. This gives some interesting precedent, uh, interesting precedent for something that if you have a really major issue in constitutional, constitutional mm -hmm. things are always really major, but they're not the only really major things. Mm -hmm. They're for overall guidance from the citizenry mm -hmm. uh, to the legislature and having the legislators involved uh, uh -huh. provides a model for engaging with the legislative structure that is complementary and engages the people. And that's this big realization is sort of obvious, but I didn't have it as a realization before that the, the legislature is tie, is rooted in the people, whereas the bureaucracy is rooted in the stakeholders. I mean, it's just almost. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, and I, I see Colin has joined us. Hi, yes. Hi Colin. Hi, Hi all. Hi, glad to meet you. We'll, there's a bunch of things I'd love to talk about about Polis in the midst of all this. But oh, wonderful! Well, it's nice to meet you too. I'm up here in Seattle, so not yeah. uh, not not too far away. Globally speaking, not too far away, but <laughs> globally speaking, not too far away. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I had some leftover before getting into some of the major things. I had some leftover bits and pieces I was curious about uh, from our earlier things. First of all, I'm curious. You say that English is your fifth or sixth language and I go what are the languages that you know and how well do you know them just to the personal level uh, fifth language right uh, so I, I was raised uh, by my well by a lot of people but primarily <laughs> by my grandma uh, who who speaks uh, Taiwanese Holok uh, and uh, my grandpa was from Sichuan um, and so he speaks, I guess, Mandarin, but with a lot of Sichuan um, accent and uh, idioms. 
of course, when I go to school, I, I learned um, Mandarin, Mandarin. Uh, and so that's like two and a half languages. Uh, and um, then I went to, uh, when I was 10, uh, I, I went to uh, Germany, uh, Zachland, to be precise. Uh, and uh, when my, my dad was doing his PhD there uh, on the um, Tiananmen um, incident, uh, he was doing his field research there. And so I, I had to learn Deutsch. Um, and so that's like the third. Uh, but You're relatively because, fluent in that? No, not, not, not anymore. I used to be. Uh, I, I, can, uh, I can still read uh, just fine, I think. Okay. Um, but, but there's uh, so much this, material in my, my world, for whatever reason, a lot of, you know, Austria and Germany. And yeah, Switzerland and Switzerland. right. So, so I, I, I'm sure that with some practice, I can, I can still write. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, speaking and uh, listening is, is not there anymore. Um, and uh, because Zockland is at the border of uh, French, so when I was 10 and I went there, I also had to learn some uh, very basic say And uh, again, it's, it's all gone, uh, <laughs> but, but uh, like the vocabulary of 10 years old. Um, so that's like the fourth language or uh, mm -hmm. so like English is going to be the fifth. Uh, I learned that when I'm already an adult and I went back to Taiwan. Yes, started playing magic. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> I learned it from, from Magic the Gathering, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I am curious from a more traditional government and organizational thing. I mean, overwhelmingly, I sense what you're doing there is more volunteer slash open space slash community. It's just sort of happening and people are moving through different, different functions and, and the whole thing kind of emerges very much like the Occupy movement was or the Mm -hmm. like repeat March experience, et cetera, the whole mm -hmm. self-organized stuff. Mm -hmm. But you said you had a staff of, I can't, you had staff and, and interns and some of them, some of them were, there was 35 of one and 25 of the other. I can't remember what, mm -hmm. uh, but particularly the staff. I mean, you're, these staff, I'm assuming are staff of you as minister, as Technology minister or as minister of that portfolio? As, 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 as dig, digital minister. That's the official minister. term. And you yeah. are, you are, um, so this is, is the, is the digital, is the digital ministry. Here are one the of, staff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They're, they're excellent people. Uh, and you can see that we don't have a dress code. Um, for whatever it is. I would assume that, particularly <laughs> digital stuff. I mean, come on. Yes, uh, right. So, but yeah, so please these, go on. Are you, these are, these are all employees of the government because you are a ministry of the government, correct or not? It depends. Uh, right. So, um, <laughs> So, 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 the, yeah, so, so let's see. Um, I'm a political appointee, right? I wasn't elected. Um, and so, it's true so, for all the ministers, right? All the heads it's of true ministers. For, it, it's true for all, all the heads of ministers. So, right. so, so there's me. And each political, political appointee, minister with a portfolio, has a, a staff of exactly one or two people. Uh, and I elected for two people. And uh, and they are my executive secretaries, uh, and so um, we have a, we have Zach, uh, who is um, the political my political staff, and we have Shu Yang, uh, who is the design and community and international liaison and rearchitect and many other things staff. Uh, I feel and like so, uh, Zach was not was not technically elected though. In the court of public opinion, Audrey was certainly elected to her. Right, right. <laughs> yes. By a claim, yeah. uh, not election. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, exactly, exactly. Thank you. Right, there's there's no voting process. There is a general consensus. So, yeah. right. Right. <laughs> so by, by, by all means, these are really the, the only staff I should have. And most other ministers with a portfolio only has a staff of three um, people, three or four people. 
uh, we have nine such ministers without portfolio. However, um, I hack the system so um, that it becomes possible for any ministries, um, public servant, career public servants, to join us by way of volunteering. They, their salaries are still paid by their original ministries, uh, but uh, they can work on site in my office. And so the original, the original assembly, uh, the core team, as we like to say, so these three are, say, co-founder of, of PETIS, but very shortly, like within a week or so, uh, we have um, we have Yijun from from NC, NDC, the National Development Council, which is very important. Just stop, uh, for a and, Just stop for a second. Yes. Are they, these are different from the uh, participation officers from each of the ministries, or are these the the, the POs haven't even started? I, I'm talking about at the very beginning of of my my uh, work in the office, so like uh, October 2016. Oh, what you're saying uh, the, now is from earlier before POs were created. Right, right, these are all before POs. So we have Yi Jun from NDC, we have Ye Ning from uh, NCC, which is the National um, Communication uh, Commission, uh, and who is also one of the primary authors of the Digital Communication Bill. Uh, and we have um, Gong Wan or DY uh, from the, now, now the Minister of Culture. Uh, right, so so they joined pretty much on the on the first week, uh, and it's it's interesting because these three people were the original people who did the V Taiwan uh, platform uh, and the joint platform uh, at Minister under Minister Jacqueline Tsai, and so they kind of joined as from from the I, I knew them uh, well uh, as a understudy minister. And so even though they went back to NCC and, and NDC and MOC um, to some degree, they, they just joined us um, like within a week. And then I went to the, um, the Institute of um, Information Industry, the I, which is like a, which is like 18F actually, but it was a, like 18F from many decades ago, um, like 30 years ago or something. Uh, and the I. Um, has supported the public workforce by employing people whose pay grade uh, is well above career public servants. And so they, they are a, a MPO, but they have a very strong um, government backing. And um, so I asked each um, part of the I. so they have like six different uh, departments uh, responsible for all the different parts of the <clears throat> technology. And I asked that one each join uh, my office. Uh, and so suddenly I have six more people. And then I then asked the uh, uh, general secretary that whatever um, case that I work, I need to have a onsite customer. So the, 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 the very first cases we deal with uh, are re uh, related to, to taxation and finance and uh, agriculture, there's a dashboard for the price of vegetables and uh, fruits later on because of typhoon. And the uh, uh, premier wants a dashboard of all the um, factors of prices. So then we have the um, Council of Agriculture, and then we have the Minister of Finance. And it just so happens that from the GovZero movement, um, there's two public servants, uh, one in each, I really want to join my team. And so they volunteered. And, and again, all this happened within the first month. And then after that, um, we just um, went to PTT, which is like Reddit. Uh, Reddit is this wonderful bulletin board. Uh, and uh, say that we're forming a participation network team. Um, and we asked any netizens uh, who are also public servants to volunteer to become participation officers. So the POs are the network then uh, that we asked the participation literally from, from the internet. Uh, so they're also netizens. And so this is the PO network. Um, and um, meanwhile, um, there's many they're other not people- They're appointed by a particular department? I thought they represented the particular departments. Uh, they represented their ministry. Yeah, so they right. reported directly to the CIO. 
but we don't put a res restriction of how many POs there is in a ministry. So for example, the Ministry of Transportation and Communication, they have two POs at the very beginning, one from the PTT who is younger and one is a much more senior executive. Huh. Okay, right. well I followed maybe a third of that in the terms mm -hmm. of the specifics. And part of, part of me needs to have a quick rundown of the structure of the government, which is I'm, I'm sensing the minister without portfolio, is that what any head of a ministry is? Or is it things that are needed across the boards? Like you are, you're the minister, the digital, uh, the digital minister, but you are, and but you're also minister without portfolio. But you talked about other ministers without portfolio. What? Yes. What is the minister so, so so right. So so yeah. Um, let me draw a very quick, not entirely correct, uh, organizational chart. Um, so our administration is called the Executive Yuan uh, or EY, uh, and oh, it is this is like edited. the executive branch of American in American politics. Ish. Yeah, uh, and <laughs> it, it's very different, you see. Uh, we have a generally elected president, but she doesn't uh, head the executive UN. She heads the presidential office, but she appoints um, our premier. Hmm. Uh, and so the premier holds the executive power, but may be replaced uh, any time by the president. Whoa. <laughs> uh, okay. So this is very different, uh, So, yeah, which is why I, I have to draw this chart. Um, and the premier is assisted by our deputy um, premier, uh, who may be delegated uh, premier power um, for pretty much anything, right? So, so that's the, um, the team. However, the executive union is technically headed by the, by the general secretary. Um, and but however, above the general secretary, there is a team of pseudo deputy premiers that are kind of like deputy premier, but we're like, like uh, only for very specific items. If the premier delegates parts of his power or her power to the minister with a portfolio, then we may act in the capacity of premier in those particular parts. Uh, however, we are not to make any decisions without an explicit authorization from the premier and a explicit uh, confirmation uh, from the general secretary. And so, so this is the our reporting structure. And so this does, is the minister without portfolios. And how does the minister without portfolio exist? Because like digital stuff is needed by every part of the government. And I can assume that's true of other ministers without portfolio or not. What makes no. ministers without portfolio? No. Um, so, so again, uh -huh. just to, to hyper summarize a little bit, um, the executive UN technically exists um, between the ministries. Right. So the ministries are headed by ministers, of course, uh, with portfolio. And the, the cabinet, the, the minister, is uh, nominated by the premier, but ultimately um, appointed by the president, just as we are. And, and so this is, again, constitutionally very interesting because the president get to essentially uh, formulate the cabinet in conjunction or in collaboration with the premier. Um, and so uh, the ministers don't actually report um, to to anyone else but uh, the president, but by extension the premier, and so we have uh, like thirty one ministries, so thirty two, um, and the minister with a portfolio used to be all like eighty uh, percent senior ministers. They were ministers, uh, and then they they ascended to the executive yuan, and still coordinated. So that between many ministers, the, MO, M, the ministers with a portfolio can have a profile 
that spans any number of ministries, like three ministries, five ministries, seven ministries, so that they can act as a bridge between the ministers uh, and mm. form a kind of virtual team mm. around particular areas that are cross ministry. Uh, but it's always yeah. very focused. Uh, for example, it's a tradition that we have a uh, a legal minister uh, with our portfolio who oversees not just the legal um, ratification process, but also the enforcement process and the other process related to law. Uh, and so which means mm -hmm. that they will have to talk to the ministers um, of, of justice, of interior, of, you know, uh, you name it. Um, mm -hmm. the, okay. Right. So, 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 so that's the, that's the like multidisciplinary and diplomatic yeah. kind of role. But it's a yes. very one has a very specific realm within which yeah. they do that. Yes, yes. But okay. however, at at the moment, there's six such minister with a portfolio who has specific um, mandates or or specific uh, realms that corresponds to ministries. There are at the moment three ministers with with a portfolio that are cross cutting, in the sense that we don't have any particular ministry uh, to to oversee. And, and uh, there's me, Audrey, uh, in charge of, uh, well, I'm the digital minister, but also in charge of social innovation, youth empowerment, uh, and um, social innovation and open government, right? So there's three mandates, the social innovation, open government, and youth empowerment. And as you can see, all these are, all, all ministries are somehow related to those three things. And so, so I don't have a <clears throat> specific realm. And there's also um, Mr. with the portfolio Deng, who used to be the Minister of Economy Affairs, uh, and he is responsible for um, trade diplomacy. So like all the trade service uh, pacts and um, the southbound policy and um, the, the new, um, you know, the US-China trade situation uh, it is all his um, and then uh, again this cross cuts into pretty much all the ministries uh, and then we also have um, and this is a new invention um, Mr. with a portfolio Xu Guoyong who is also the sp speaks person of the executive yuan uh, and this is a new invention um, because the speaks person uh, generally speaking is reporting to the general secretary and he speaks on behalf of the administration, but it's a purely communication officer um, mm -hmm. staff. Uh, however, because he is also minister of his portfolio, um, when he goes to, um, for example, regional um, touring around uh, <coughs> meetings to explain the policies, he has now the, the power to pretty much call any ministry and agency to go along with him. So it is a, a like super yeah. empowered spokesperson. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, yeah, those yeah. are the three cross-cutting ones. And here are the six more traditional ones. Okay. And in this is there's the general secretary is in the prime, let's say premier, I guess would be the prime minister. Uh, what's called premier in some places is, or what's called the, uh, uh, Prime Minister in some places is called Premier here, something like that. Uh, uh, well, well, totally well yeah, but, but but I mean, none of those people in UI are uh, are from the Parliament, right? So um, it is not like in no. some countries where the ministers are also MPs. Uh, like yeah. like none of, none of, none of us has a constituent constituency. Right. Okay, so the, and the prime minister is a function of um, parties that are in control of the legislature. Uh, that, that, that name is usually associated with that kind of function. That, that's exactly right, which is why we call premier, premier. And to okay. even more complicate things, um, it is a custom for president to be also the head of the ruling party. Uh, that's been true for, for quite some time now. And so President Tsai Ing-wen is also the head of the Democratic Progressive Party. But that's uh, a tradition, the, not a requirement like it is in- Not, not, a, not a requirement. And the previous president, Ma ying was also head of the, the nationalist, the Kuomintang Party. Right, but um, they're not voting for the party, they're voting for the president and that president. That, that's, that's right. And, and, and that's very important because 
um, at the end of the Ma Ying-jeou um, presidency, the the premier was independent, uh, Simon Zhang. And at the beginning of the president Tsai's presidency for a year or so, the premier was also independent, uh, Premier Lin Chen. And so it is um, at the moment in the cabinet, ever since the beginning of President Tsai Ing-wen's uh, original cabinet, there's more independent ministers, uh, parts of the cabinet, than members of any party. Um, the ratio is yeah. around 40% independent, 30% DPP, and two point something percent uh, KMT. Interesting. Okay, right, so it's a well, very balanced. I, um, I have a hard stop at seven forty-five tonight. So if there's anything that yeah, uh, I'm I'm totally happy oh. to listen. But if there's anything, if there's anything specifically okay. related to me, it should we should probably yeah. We should probably okay. Okay. I will shift gears temporarily to uh, Paul. Please do, uh, and I can. Uh, we can go that. back. I have. I will, I want to continue from there in a, in a few minutes. Hey, um, please. Yeah, right. in Paulus, one of one of the central things in my search for inclusive wisdom, which is sort of my participatory wisdom, is sort of my uh, one way to talk about what I'm interested in. I'm interested in the out quality of outcomes. And I think participation is necessary because of the complexity of the systems that we're dealing with, the problems that we're dealing with. Uh, so I'm looking at the extent to which Paulus can generate collective wisdom. And a lot of my inquiries come out of that. So one of the things I'm assuming, although I can't read you know, Chinese to tell what's going on with the specific results of the B Taiwan polis things, uh, I am assuming that the polis process surfaces two kinds of consensus, one of which is lowest common denominator consensus, which is, you know, we, the people want world peace or something like that. And the other is somebody's suggestion that came out of the process that happens to be a brilliant suggestion that encompasses a lot of what needs to be taken into account. And everybody from all sides is recognizing that. And that's a closer to wise consensus. And I'm assuming both of those are generated by Paulus. Do you have any thoughts on that? It's funny, I think Audrey is going to the uh, Civic Hist article recently that uh, I was about to go to as well. And so Audrey, do you want to share about that for just a moment? And then I can fill in? Or do you want to share that link? Yeah, you, you can share this link. But but what I'm saying is that the police system um, doesn't um, have a component that um, really determine how wise uh, is any statement. Uh, yeah. However, it, it does list uh, the statements that, have, that achieve broad consensus, not just in the final report, but throughout the game. And so um, the whole idea, I think, is, of course, uh, we always, almost always see um, those general, general um, consensus items. But uh, as time goes by, um, it will be repetitive if people see a majority uh, opin opinion uh, that is um, like not exactly yeah. surprising. And so it very gradually goes into um, more wise uh, suggestions if you let the game play uh, long enough. And there's this brilliant um, link that te that's, uh, Colin just pasted, called testing tech for consensus in the purple town that goes uh, into the like play by play. This is in Bo Bowling Green, Kentucky. Columbia University just ran um, a started with a polis conversation and then went into a 250 person town hall uh, at which uh, many uh, both elected and appointed um, uh, and kind of career uh, uh -huh. bureaucrats were at. Uh, and then that followed with a um, with a round table. Um, what you'll notice from this is that uh, their their emphasis on starting this instead of with a topic as, would, as was done in B Taiwan, but with a general how could we improve life in Bowling Green was. Uh -huh. led them to a very general discussion oriented kind of an uh, event rather than a focused, um, if they had done it on something like opioids, which is what, what, which was the suggestion for the follow-up from several uh -huh. parties. Uh, I think they would have had probably a more discreet outcome um, in terms of what power was willing to address. And to, you know, they could have had a panel that was much more focused on, uh, on, on some kind of concrete um, or, or specific uh -huh. Change as it was, um, though there were uh, uh, over 2,000 people that participated um, from a town of about 60,000. So that was quite a quite a, a solid percentage of, um, yeah, of yeah. people that were engaged. And the there 
it was all, what was also clear um, was that there was an enormous amount of consensus uh, and the things that were controversial were these kind of national straw man issues, things like uh, things that really don't affect people day to day. Um, the things that affect people day to day, there was an, a huge amount of consensus in the city about um, across party lines. Uh, and that's, that, was, that was clear. And that, that to me was a success. Um, it was a success on a number of levels, though there were certainly, a, um, cer certainly it's, uh, it, it does not, um, I, don't, I would not say that it moved the dial on any specific issue, but that model wise, it was <clears throat> like, it, it did the first half correctly, which was the, you know, it, it got, it, it distributed through independent media, which I think is the legitimate, um, that is the kind of proper model in the United States, uh, have independent media and, and uh, universities run, um, run the conversations and then uh, feed that into, uh, if, if power is unwilling, then feed that, feed that into a situation where it creates legitimacy. Um, if power is willing to, to come to the table and run it, then, you know, more compromises from civil society can be made. But um, there's, there's a, there's a, basically that, that's kind of, I think, a little bit more art there than science uh, as to how, how, how you would approach that. I, I think that's a fabulous example, and thank you for an English-American example. I can dive yeah, into Yeah, absolutely. Depth. You click through there to the report but, and kind of see what's, yeah, what's what. I love that. I'm, there's a couple, there's a bunch of things I like to talk about, and you only have five more minutes, so we can't talk about all of them, but one of them, I'm imagining, again, we, uh, Audrey and I discussed some, uh, the different ways that might be able to be messed with. Uh, and a new one I came up with since my last talk with Audrey would be somebody who's not trying to bias the system towards their perspective, but is just trying to demolish its ability to do its work. So if you have the bot that is, gives random answers and you have lots of those giving random answers, so there are more random answers than there are real people intended answers what would be the response of the system to that kind of invention intervention? It's a good question. Uh, I think that, uh, so uh, I can answer that on a number of levels. One of them is that, um, you know, random is probably what you would see. Uh, and if you, if it were it truly high random, consensus, that's what I'm thinking. So, it would hide yeah, so let me, let me, let me say it this way. Like um, random is a pattern because random is a pattern di quite distinct from how people vote. People don't vote anywhere near randomly. <laughs> like mm -hmm. people vote in incredibly deterministic patterns uh, through, the, through these things. And so you have the kind of like, you have the kind of like idiot or genius um, uh, 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 effect there where it's like either, if someone is voting dramatically different than, than like there are certain patterns through the, through the woods, right? Um, there, are, there are not like certain statements, you know, you vote on one, you must vote inversely on the other one. If you vote and have both of those in your head at the same time, something's, something's seriously wrong, right? So, so with an algorithm, you could cancel all that effect out. You would, you would see that, you, you would see that um, uh, but it would be difficult. You would have to be looking for it. So, I mean, it would not necessarily be apparent at the outset, but it's an arms race, right? If it is the case that people um, begin throwing bots at polls, which we have not seen, I... I, I, I'll explain this at a number of levels. One level is that it's an arms race, right? Um, it's a, you know, and, and it's an arms race. Security is an arms race in general. Um, right. I think, uh, and so, so we can detect, for instance, that the votes are coming in every 50 milliseconds. That would maybe look like a bot, right? It looks, the, the clicks look too deterministic. Google uses that to, to, for a captcha, right? How are the clicks coming in? You can look at IP addresses and if they're known bot IP addresses, you can look at, there are any number of, of, of things that you can get into with the arms race. We haven't gotten into any of them. And I think there's a question there as to why we haven't gotten into any. One is that we're not high profile enough yet. And that's, you know, in, in a way, like, right, we're not like being used like, all. Oh, we're not the American electoral system, right? This is not the level of which we have. Attained. Once you start moving towards that, there will be more effort to. Perhaps. I mean, we were just used by the Canadian government on, uh, um, and I'll, I'll share this link as well, um, because this is a, um, the visual arts community a conversation about copyright in Canada. This is the government of Canada has just used it. Uh, and Singapore, um, uh, let's see here. Um, Sing uh, there, the uh, Singapore's um, Ministry of Youth um, is also using it right now and running live conversations. So there are mm -hmm. there are ministries uh, around the world in, in national governments that are running conversations. Um, even still, these are ministries that nor don't necessarily uh, get more than a couple hundred people showing up to discuss things. Um, you know, it is not connected to a civic tech community or a visible participatory framework the way in which V Taiwan came out of uh, out of out of Gov Zero. That matters a lot. 
um, the visibility and the kind of a, a organic social spread and the, the degree which civil society is looking at this as a means of, of, of outlet of frustration has something to do with how many people show up and how, what a focal point is. But I, I think the other thing is that who are trolls and who are bots in the first place? A lot of times they're people with an axe to grind uh, and, you know, and, and, and or, or they're people who are looking to exploit a system, right? So I think, I think the motivations of the bot actors are also very important to consider as to why it has or has not been attacked. Um, I, you know, and, and I think that's, that's something that's a different level and we can only speculate there, but I think that, you know, I'll, I'll put it this way. When we went, when Polis went up on Hacker News, um, people said, oh, that's extremely smart. <laughs> and it's funny, we, we got a really good reaction from that crowd, right? We were afraid when we posted it that way back when, right? It was like, oh man, if people see that, you know, it'll like, uh, they'll, they'll know what we're doing, right? And, and, and it'll be pretty clear how to, how to game it. Uh, we didn't see anything like that. I mean, and, and again, in Taiwan, there are, you know, thousands of, uh, thousands of, of technologists with eyes on who could certainly write a script to game it. And I, I guess the, there's a question in motivation as to why hasn't that happened. Not, again, we can only speculate, but I think it's worth speculating. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, yeah. if, if, level, if, if technologists yeah. see something that significantly smarter is being done, don't mess that thing up. Um, I, I think there's a little bit more, a little bit more affinity from the technology side. I might be wrong, but I, I have a feeling it's like, it is a little bit less dumb. Whereas the, um, whereas the FCC, I mean, just, I, I actually appreciate the fact that people are, are throwing in 500,000 fake comments because it demonstrates what an idiotic system it is in the first place. I'm on their side on, in that case. So I, I don't, you know. <laughs> I'll happily write that script myself to demonstrate what an idiotic, uh, what, what, what an idiotic thing it is to have hundreds of thousands. I've spoken to people in the government um, who are on the other side of that. For instance, in the um, Department of Agriculture and Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and they're on the other side of a million comments. And they're effectively one and a half full-time people for a limited amount of time tasked with reviewing them. They go in and have absolutely no quantitative information, just a bunch of raw text saying every which way and every which thing, no validation. Right who it came from or where they are. So, I mean, it's, it's effectively useless and that's next to facilitated rulemaking with 30 lawyers from industry in the room next door. So it's like, right. <laughs> that, those there are the voices of the American people, um, you know, degraded and, uh, uh, and, and treated with, you know, no respect. And then Can I other. insert, you've, you've basically given me enough to answer my question. There you uh, are. Yeah. I want to try just a couple more quick ones. Sure. You know about CoDigital? Uh, no. Okay, CoDigital is a prioritization thing, which is, which does pair pair comparisons. Do you prefer this option or that option? It's similar to Polis in the sense that anybody participating can offer an item in. And yeah, items... there's been a number of pairwise, uh, pairwise engines. All our, uh, right. all our ideas? Hmm? You're what? All, uh, all our ideas? I don't know that. Is that another similar? It is. It's another pairwise. Okay. Um, I, you know, it's, it's just a different, um, it's a different, uh, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll paste that in here too. Uh, I don't favor those personally. I am incredibly biased and you shouldn't listen to me. Um, but I, I think they, uh, I think they're a little bit belaborous because what you end up with is you end up with like red or green, red or yellow, yellow or blue. And then it's like, and then it's converging. And so the, the user ends up doing like yellow or, or, or A, yellow or B, yellow or C, yellow or D, yellow or E. And as yeah, it converges, I'm not, it gets I'm not thinking, I'm not thinking of them as uh, necessarily opponents of each other. No, no, no. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking of there's potential to to best between answer. them. Yeah, there's different, then they serve different purposes, and I wanted to sort of talk around in that space, they, but there's they not do. time to do that here. No, no, they they do. Yeah, I do have to hop off, but they those um, those are really effective if you're looking for one best answer or or to try to converge on a series of best uh, of best answers, um, mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to converge on uh, um, trying mm -hmm. to converge on, on a on a, a landscape. Um, they, these are not quite as effective at the landscape, but we're weak. We're weak if if the um, if the desire is like a like a, a discrete outcome, I will poke poke around more with you in that when I visit uh, on the twenty eighth. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Uh, Paulus, the, the, I understand in the fields of opinion that are given, there are some outliers who are not really part of any of these groups. Uh, I'm wondering if you would ever think of doing on. Uh, doing something to explore them. There's a, um, what is it called? Um, uh, Partic not, shoot, there's a, there's a specific process that focuses on people who have creative solutions that are outside the norm and how to spread those creative solutions, identifying those people and spreading their things into the society. Um, dissidents, Positive, positive, dis, is it positive 
just sent. I'm not sure, Audrey. Do you know that? Uh... Positive, positive, what is it? Positive deviance. There it is. Positive deviance. Okay. Positive deviance. And I will look um, into that. And it feels like there's that, that there is some potential synergy with the Paulus outliers that are not specifically collections of dissent or collections of agreement. They're, they have a uniqueness which may or may not be fruitful. And I'm curious, mm -hmm. given that you can identify them. Uh, yes. And the, uh, the final thing is one of my focuses in my efforts to be, to be more inclusively wise is people have concerns and addressing those concerns uh, has the power to make a solution better. So part of what I was thinking was if there is ever, when you have something which is 95% agreement. What are the concerns of the people who have five, who, who are part of the disagreeers? Right. You know, the way in which you are focused, you focus attention yep. on things that are nearly complete consensus. And I go, that's a really valuable place to be. And if yeah. you want to up it, why did those people, you know, and the, right. could there be some way where Paulus could branch out at that point? Or those particular kinds of questions where another polis is created about that item that is focused on concerns. I, I think about that, that I, will item. Kick, I will kick it back to Audrey, uh, and that that <laughs> is a, uh, a a good place a good place to pick up for uh, for all of you, as that is like that okay. that is just about where we leave off in terms of producing a landscape, but not necessarily having an opinion of what of what its next you know what its next destination is. So yeah. Well, I'm just, I just realized you could do this with a, a group set aside and say, okay, group, work on this. But you could yeah. also have Paulus be fractal, you know, so that the Paulus process starts yes. over from a point in the Paulus process. I think, I think, Audrey, I think you would find Audrey and I both agree. Um, I, I, I could definitely speak for myself. We've had many conversations in this, uh, in this realm of where you start. You could see in the conversation in, um, in Bowling Green, they start at the most general. Then there's another fractal layer of like uh, opioids versus like um, traffic versus education, and then within each one of those, it, it, you could drill down. Um, oh, okay, and, great. Figuring out what the, what that landscape is, in, you know, in, in, at, at more and more granularity, is different tools and different processes, and we haven't quite fit, figured out uh, other than just starting another one, throwing it out there based on you know based on the information is, uh, but I know that um, Talk to Taiwan has done that um, in, in, uh, in various cases, they've thrown out, thrown out a second conversation, so. So hopefully that, that's right. by, that's right. yes. by the 28th, I will understand enough to have an intelligent conversation with you on that. <laughs> Feel free to reach out and I'm happy to send over a few more links. Okay, great. Okay, all right, thanks everyone, great to see you. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for joining okay, us. Okay, cheers. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, um, just, just logistics. Uh, for, for the day uh, that we're supposed to meet face to face, uh, I, I have selected a, a place, uh, it's Teco uh, Seattle. Teco is like a consulate setting uh, and um, the meeting room should be large enough. Uh, and we have booked 10, I think half, half past 10, uh, all the way to 7 p.m. Uh, and it's, I'm not saying, I, I, I mean, you have a, Tom have a, preference of very long um, meetings. And so we've uh, maximized the, the meeting time, but there is no obligation for you okay. to stay the, the whole way. You, uh, you have to do other things there. What, what, you're saying I could have the whole day or you're saying- oh, Yeah, yeah, yes, you yes. Have three uh, hours yeah. anywhere in the day, you know? No, no, but, no because, because I, I literally delayed uh, my flight uh, because of this. Like I, I go back to Taiwan one day later. So oh, there's okay. no meetings scheduled uh, for that day. Uh, but um, the the structure would be, um, I think, in the ten half past ten to noon, uh, because we also have Deputy Minister of Science and Technology as well as other people from the Taiwan delegate. Um, we we start with a brief overview of the the past, the current uh, applications of police, especially the the ones that are just recently being summarized, uh, such as the ones calling uh, surface here because there's lots of English material that uh, wasn't um, produced because it, the crowd just wasn't large enough for this kind of material to surface. And so I think it would be great to go over those materials with the Taiwan delegate 
as well, and basically very large um, show and tell question and answer um, format. And then uh, starting from lunch, we delve into much deeper topics of, of governance and the future. So if you're okay with that, you're of course welcome to join at any particular point. Yeah. Okay, so this is this is a structured conversation you have you have already that is covering a lot of ground that I want to cover and I can join in that. Yeah, it's, it's a draft that I, I came up like 10 <laughs> okay. or 15 minutes ago. So uh, you, you, you have plenty of time to revise that if, if you prefer a different <laughs> but structure. It's not, it's not as if, you know, I show up like in these calls and we talk about whatever, you know, you, you need to have a structure. For there, there's two, there's two broad segments, right? The past and current is the first half. Uh, and uh, future is the other seven hours. Yeah, but but the seven hours is a very long time and we can fractalize it however we want. Uh -huh. Okay, so I will, I will lower in priority the questions that I have on future. Because uh, that's, that's future in terms of larger outreach into the larger movement. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, the go and the governance of the technology itself. Yeah. Uh-huh. Now that's governance of governance of polis or governance of the of polis of polis, but but polis now work in conjunction with many other technologies, uh -huh. and so and so we can talk about many other technologies as well. It doesn't have to be digital technologies. Um, there's uh -huh. a bunch of people who want to combine uh, some form of this with uh, random sample voting, uh, which is uh, again a way to cryptographically or mathematically protect against uh, the various attacks you you just uh, mentioned mm -hmm. uh, and still have the representative uh, fragment uh, or parts of the society to be uh, able to deliberate and vote uh, based on uh, CDC principles and uh, are could be more more binding the the reference here is uh, called you count but there's many other uh, things that are in the same domain. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Any, <clears throat> any links to uh, initiatives or methodologies that you think you'll be talking about that I should educate myself on to be able to participate mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. a more generic rather than just my own past and questions mm -hmm. like familiar territory mm -hmm. would be useful and I'll try and get up the mm -hmm. data before I show up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Um, downshifting for a moment to the um, government yes. model. Who is currently of these functions, people holding these functions, who are currently most um, supportive of the kind of um, engagement, public and stakeholder engagement perspective that you represent? Uh, by far the president. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if they're the next question, because I've watched this elsewhere, if the president is replaced by somebody who is less sympathetic, does this whole thing get wiped out or how does, what's, what's the, what's the, uh, resilience in a quasi-democratic scenes we've got, you know, and w what is the vulnerability mm -hmm. of the Taiwan mm -hmm. to getting overturned by right. a replacement? Right, so um, the structure, the participation officers, the, the online platforms, petition platform, referendum platform, and so on, they are variously defined uh, by regulations and laws. The, the National Referendum Act, uh, which just passed a couple of months ago, um, is binding because it's a parliament thing. So if you want to overturn that, it takes, uh, again, a majority vote in the parliament. Um, many other things like the e-petition and the participation officer network are defined in the regulation level. So technically a new president can just cancel them. So there are two levels, right? Uh, if it's um, at the, the law level, then uh, the president has to go um, through a lot of hoops uh, to cancel it because it's a, a very firm structure. Uh, basically, we would say it's part of democracy. Uh, and at that level, we have the National Referendum Act. Um, we hope to soon have the Digital Communication Act. 
uh, which is like the embodiment of um, V Taiwan spirit uh, by explicitly defining what a multi-stakeholder um, consensus gathering participatory platform is. And the very important note that it doesn't have to be controlled by the government. The, the government should be uh, supportive of any multi-stakeholder initiative that are cross sectors. And so, so this is again yeah. a draft stage. Uh, but the referendum act is already already firmly here. Uh, at the regulation stage, uh, we have uh, the various the the POs are are in this level. The e petitions are in this level, uh, and uh, very soon, uh, I think yeah, we'll we'll we actually revise the e petition laws. Um, that, sorry, regulations so that it links to the to the POs, and so these two are now linked. Um, and there's a counterpart like the open data and everything, which are all in this level. Um, and so, so there's many regulations as well as the government digital service um, principles, the GDSP, which are again in draft stage um, that again defines a stakeholder involvement at the very beginning as a core component for any digital service. So there's this mutually supporting cloud of regulations and one of the, the current Vita one topics is how much or how, um, how deep should we lift parts of these things into a separate law or, or shouldn't we? And so that's one of the ongoing mm -hmm. uh, Vita one um, conversation. Yeah. That's the current so status. In terms of how to protect it internally by law uh, is your main strategy at this point so that it would be very difficult for uh, a new president to, it's not necessarily impossible because the president would traditionally has a majority party uh, support. Um, but so part of, part of me goes, I'm, I'm very happy to see that the kinds of thinking that's going on there. And mm -hmm. it, it occurs to me that the visibility and logic, you know, you know, the the narrative the narrative that this is a participatory way to bring sanity uh, to governance processes uh, mm -hmm. at all levels uh, feels like whatever could be done to support that in the public's mind mm -hmm. you know how much of this is made public a la the McLean's magazine whatever so that the public demands this and would never stand for any president to change it mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. also among stakeholders you know i don't know to what mm -hmm. extent there's that's where the engi begins to cross over uh, mm -hmm. with the emerging network governance initiative because they're trying to have stakeholders per se identify as a as a uh, a governing force Mm -hmm. and of self-aware, you know, with stakeholders in one area are in fact similar to stakeholders in another area mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. collectively and that their interests are served by having certain things happening and their interests are undermined mm -hmm. by other things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a, that's a piece I wanted to just toss into the, into the mix. Right, right. Uh, however, the POs are not just POs, right? They're also senior public servants uh, and so senior executives uh, and their career uh, public servants. So uh, my main strategy um, is uh, based on the fact that like our current president is what uh, in the second year of a traditionally a year term, well, two four year terms, uh, but which leaves us about six years uh, to develop this model uh, under the current cabinet. Uh, and so within the six years, those senior executives who are our first batch of POs who are very much starting, um, they're mostly in their 40s and 50s, um, they will raise to, to deputy minister level um, within the six years. So the traditional um, under a minister there are traditionally two to three deputy ministers. Um, and it is uh, traditional to have one politically appointed deputy minister and one deputy minister that is a senior executive. 
uh, and in larger ministries, it may be two and one or one and two. Um, and so by having senior executives as POs, we're betting that six years down the road, many of them will be in the uh, general secretary for their ministry level, or many of them will be even uh, deputy minister level. Uh, and they will, again, support this methodology from within the career public service uh, task force. Yeah, I would, that would be very encouraging, except I'm living in the, uh, where the Trump administration is tearing apart the foundations of all the departments, uh, you know, basic principles, removing people right and left, including career people, you know, okay. so, but there's a, there's many different approaches to handling. You're handling it really well on some approaches, but there's some there's some really horrible possibilities that are that are sitting there. But we don't have to be preoccupied with that. But I would, in terms of in terms of from my perspective, in terms of the importance of this kind of process mm -hmm. for, um, I mean, my, the world language I want to have is for the survival of the human race. <laughs> it's like it gets mm -hmm. to that level. Uh, it's not just the day-to-day -day functioning thing. There's a much bigger mm -hmm. thing going on uh, mm -hmm. to have this kind of process um, made as invulnerable as possible. And part of becoming invulnerable is being able to constantly change in response to what's going on. Mm -hmm. You already mm -hmm. have a lot of that, mm -hmm. uh, which I tremendously admire. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, so. So I'm going to leave. Thank you very much for allowing me to uh, jump in uh -huh. here. And Tom, if you need to use my Zoom, give me a call. I mean, it's just the two of okay. you. So, so far, yeah. right. It'll be, it'll about at nine o'clock our time, um, Martin will come on. Wonderful. Oh, that's great. Because he has his own things he wants to talk about too. So. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear that. It was, okay. it was a real privilege uh, participating in this, and it's exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice Thank seeing you again. Cheers. <laughs> uh, okay, here we are again. Um, yeah, there was one, one very detailed thing. There was one point in the last, uh, the last tape, I think it was, where I think the phrase said, name and tech line to point out controversial points. Does that communicate anything? Is that, does that sound like something you would have said that you could articulate Ta what tag it means? Line? Maybe it's tagline, name and oh. tagline to point out controversial points. To point out controversy. I don't have a transcript yet for the second conversation. Yeah, that's right. Um, it, it, it sounds more like a Shuyang thing, but if I, if I said oh, that, could be. um, <laughs> yeah, right. But, but, but if I said that, uh, I mean, um, the, the, the main idea, um, and I, I'm just filling in, uh, Shuyang's mind in the simulation in my brain here. Uh, if I, if I said I challenge Shuyang, uh, it, it would be, um, more of like the, um, the kind of, focus level or function level raising uh, interventions that uh, Mickey was saying in our first conversation. It is by pointing out uh, a, a problem statement or a quick um, summary of what the main um, contention point and therefore conflict resolution point are to all the participants uh, involved. And mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, in the VTOW and process, it is essential that we surface this tension, if there is tension to begin with, um, in, the, in the title uh, and the tagline and so the what description. Is the tagline? What uh, is the Right. Of the, of, of the, the issue. Whole, of the whole issue. Uh -huh. Yeah, so of the whole issue. So um, if we go to Vita 1 and um, see the issues there, like the tagline of the data integration is how do we make use, make full use of data um, along with the public service? And uh, uh, tagline for uh, that, that's, a, that's a question. Is a tagline basically it, a question, an inquiry? It, it's a pr provocation, it's a, it's a provocation, right? So the sharing economy is, the, the provocation is, is it yours, is it theirs, is there mine? what is uh, ownership in the platform economy? 
mm-hmm. and so so it's a so it it's a provocation. A it usually is a question yeah. though, but we have, may have other things also. But the the question or the other things are intended to provoke a little more complex thinking. By yes. So at. so so the, the the idea is that instead of people just looking at the title and um, you know, coming up with, with lower level um, associations, we start mm-hmm. the associations by provoking people to think along the main controversial and conflict resolution lines. Okay, thank you very much. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Oh. And I love that. That's another way of doing, creating brilliant questions. I mean, the sense of questions I think we discussed this when we talked to Mickey. You know, my view is questions point to a space, mm-hmm, not mm-hmm. to a specific answer, but mm-hmm. to a space of inquiry. And this is questions pointing to a space of controversy mm-hmm. uh, without saying one way or another what's supposed to happen with it, but just sort of stirring up the energy. That's right. There was an open space I was part of where the first, the, the morning of the first five days, was an, was a world cafe where the question was what question if dealt with here really well would change everything mm. <laughs> and it's very the world cafe mm. went through like three rounds and then there was lunch there's no sense of trying to find the answer there was lunch and then after lunch they opened the space <laughs> i thought that was such a brilliant design <laughs> everybody was all stirred up <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, all, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, a few things on the way you, you operate. Um, I sort of alluded to it earlier, the sense that you, you are definitely for, um, what's the name for, putting everything out there. Uh, but Radical a, transparency? Transparency, right. Um, yeah. Transparency is different from uh, different from, but intimately related to accessibility, and it's mm-hmm. different from and intimately related to <clears throat> public knowledge. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a sense of having things posted on a website with it freely available, how to look at it, anybody who's interested. Uh, mm-hmm. There is the dimension. I'm think putting that as a a low level of this high high level thing, and then the next mm-hmm. one is the live streaming of process where people mm-hmm. can see the raw thing unfolding mm-hmm. in real time and comment mm-hmm. on it. You know, it's a. I think you said many times you have chat function mm-hmm. accompanying mm-hmm. live stream. That's right. It's two way. Mm-hmm. And then, but the the people have to sign in to the live stream have to be the kind of people who are aware of live streams uh, mm-hmm. very different from what happened with mclean's and canadian tv which was a broadcast here mm-hmm. is something, here is a channel that people are and i'm not saying tv channel all that was true but there's a there is a media channel through which information is always flowing to people and this thing is now being put out over that channel Mm-hmm. So many people who are tuned in to that particular channel see it. And I'm thinking of mass media, not of the, you know, smaller. Well, you can emulate chat room from mass media by posting, as we do, a, um, a, a QR code or a SMS number or whatever uh, over the, as an overlay so that people know they can just text uh, to this number or to open this particular link and um, then enter the more interactive space, is what I'm saying. I wasn't even thinking interactive at this, on this level. I was thinking of, you know, this is at four o'clock Thursday, this interaction between these people will be, uh, will be available on i don't know what your stations are we have 300 different channels but if there's some major ones you know here's the here's the major broadcast channel that you don't have to subscribe to you get it automatically with your tv 
uh, and there's like 10 of those. So they mm -hmm. these are the NBC, ABC, you know, kind of um, Fox News, whatever the fo those channels to have something mm -hmm. go out over that uh, is another layer of public accessibility because people are already engaged with those realms and who not, I think an awful lot of live streaming is either young people who are very tech acclimatized or um, the geek world. Um, right, 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 right. I hardly, in, ever, I hardly in, ever witness live streaming. I'm a different person. No, no, it, but, but you do have like C-SPAN, right? So there is like dedicated channel yes, for public I know. matters. I know. Very few yeah. people watch C-SPAN. Okay, uh, too bad. And it's very, and it's, and it's very, it's, the design is horrible. There's very often one congressperson will be speaking to an empty hall uh, mm. for their constituents, not really because it's anything terribly meaningful. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it has a reputation for being really boring and only policy geeks ever watch it. Okay. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not thinking of that, but I'm thinking of like what happened with McLean's. Uh, here's a major, Newspaper or not news, well, newspaper, newspaper, magazine. Uh, every country has their major things. Some to a certain extent, communities have those things, and people get them free or subscribe to them. But they're different mm -hmm. from the live stream channels. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, I feel like am I am I just this old seventy one year old guy who's talking to stuff that mm -hmm. doesn't exist or matter anymore? <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I see. Right, right. I see where you're, you're you're getting at. It is it is more about accessibility, um, but with a journalistic ish uh, lens uh, or context where people are expecting to read about public affairs instead of gossiping uh, in the mm -hmm. first place and therefore more ready in a state of mind to, to engage into public affairs. So it is about a, a media that has a inherent frame of um, public affairs uh, and current affairs, so to speak, rather than dedicated like C-SPAN to uh, particular functions of the government. Right, and there's there's there are branches of that. There's the journalistic branch which mm -hmm. is is it covered by media Those are the things that are going on mm -hmm. part of the daily news mm -hmm. in, in uh, taiwan you know so the v mm -hmm. taiwan activities mm -hmm. are they being covered by the daily news so that most of the population knows at least that it's going on mm -hmm. and it has oh yeah 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 it. yes yes but but only for like really controversial issues will the journalists devote extra time but uh, at least the, the CNA, um, the, the uh, national news agency, which is part of the public. Um, so the CNA is, is the, the central news agency uh, and they do send out um, announcements of um, the upcoming, not just V Taiwan conversations, but uh, really any conversation that we really want uh, mass awareness. Um, and mm -hmm. uh, they also run, um, more detailed um, conversations, um, such as there's a one where they interview me for half an hour summarizing the recent conversation on uh, autonomous vehicles um, on V Taiwan and on joint platforms uh, and in the format of a, a interactive dialogue. And um, over the past few days, it's been syndicated by pretty much all the mass media uh, here in Taiwan. Uh, uh -huh. So, so, so there is this broadcast channel, but we, we use that to to summarize conversations. We we don't use that to recruit um, people at this point because for that particular conversation, it's well past its um, regulatory yeah. pre-announcement period. It's going right. to be in the parliament next week anyway, or in a few weeks. I yeah. could see. I mean, that's the retroactive, having proactive efforts. And I don't know, it feels like there's, your work overlaps so much with the uh, GovZero world, mm -hmm. whether the GovZero, the people in GovZero as a movement that's trying to have an impact mm -hmm. uh, might see proactive coverage by various public media. Uh, yes. 
publicly viewed media as something to find new ways to do and to actively promote because yes. that will ultimately secure and advance the kind of thing that they've been developing. That, that's right. And, and we, we try to, to very selectively uh, promote um, things because, you know, for things like Uber, the, the entire Taiwan is aware of it. But for mm -hmm. things like um, the Hengchun Hospital case or the Penghu um, Marine Preservation Park case, by, by nature, only um, people in their neighborhood care a lot about it. Mm -hmm. And so, so we try to leverage the stakeholder network um, because for e-petition, it's easier because by definition, they already amassed about 5,000 people. So if we set the messages right, those 5,000 people will become the seed in which the word of mouth, as well as popular media, of course, um, spread the, the uh, news that there's going to be a conversation about it. If it doesn't come from e-petition, uh, we, are, we are pretty selective. Uh, we only do it if the stakeholders we think are not reached by the existing snowballing survey um, and that there are parts of Taiwan that we're missing and we have to go through mass media. To, to do that. And the reason we, we do this is because for things like autonomous vehicles, it's much easier if we actually have a self-driving tricycle, for example, for people to play with uh, and then come up with informative um, questions you're, and answers you're and deliberations. Of recruiting, you're thinking of recruiting participants in the process. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm have a, a different agenda, which mm -hmm. is embedding the vital nature and vital necessity of such processes in the public mind oh yeah but but that's 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 more the i mean the the national reform forums uh on pension reform on judicial reform on um there, there's this also national forum on on the future of the the cultural white paper um and so so all these national forums um have a lot of visibility on mass media already. Uh, and because they are, um, there's huge amount of regional sub forums for this kind of design, they also get people more chance to participate uh, face to face. And so that's already going on. So which is why we don't um, raise more awareness of, of this more uh, multi-stakeholder um, model because the, the more, I, w I wouldn't say CDC, but hybrid model has been already going on and it's on everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I would, I would be interested in a, in a survey uh, on, that had, had to do, it was a, a public, a standard public opinion poll uh, mm -hmm. that had to do with um, to what extent do you know about value, whatever various parameters, uh, the public participation or the um, stakeholder participation in the creation mm -hmm. of our governance, uh, um, so, something that, that finds out how many people were aware. There was actually a, a funny downside example where this, this com comedian, news comedian from the U.S., who went to Moscow to interview, um, what's his face, the, the um, uh, Edward the Snowden? Day. Yeah, Edward Snowden. And yeah, before, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, I, I watched that. Yeah, it's a very <laughs> uh, visceral um, illustration of, of Snowden's points. Well, it was, there was the one point I wanted to mention was his, his uh, he had gone around Boston asking people if they knew what, who Edward Snowden was, and most of them, in the, at least in his sample, didn't know. And Snowden was really thrown by that because he just totally turned his life upside down in order to, you know, make this known. And he thought his name would be known by everybody. <laughs> Hardly yeah, anybody knew about it. It's a it's a it's a filter bubble. But um, yeah, I, I, but uh, so but back back to the national forums. Um, what what I'm saying is that all these forums are are bootstrapping. Uh, the Judicial Reform Forum, for example, has one of its resolution that uh, this the, the process of the implementation of the consensus point need to be publicly tracked and accountable online 
And one of the other uh, things is so accountability. Um, and another thing is that there's going to be a more regular participatory process of the judicial yuan and the other um, judicial um, forms. And part of the it is the citizens jury, which we didn't have. Uh, and uh, so what, what I'm saying jury, is that- You mean not uh, citizens jury it, as a public issue thing, but a jury in trial. A jury that work with the judges, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, so we, we don't have that system. And so as part of the resolution, we're introducing uh, some form of that system. So what, what I'm saying is that always when in those forums where there is a ma majority component um, of, of citizen participation or citizen constituents uh, in the forum, we almost always see the resolutions uh, bootstrap itself by de defining more forms of participation uh -huh. down the road. Uh, and and that's been uh -huh. true for pretty much all the national forums. Uh -huh. wow. Okay, so that's what I didn't get what you meant by bootstrapping, but I get, I get that each each one is a, an initiating a f further further spread of that particular approach <clears throat> to it. Uh huh. Okay, there's another interesting thing um, approach that is inspired by a mixture of McLean's and. Uh, uh, and the and the Canadian broadcasting and uh, and reality TV, mm -hmm. uh, which is the idea of having a dramatic um, presentation of a real life deliberation, public deliberation, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. sort of what McLean's and Canadian TV did. I mean, it went over you know two and a half days, but they did an excellent editing job where you know, they talk about conflict cells uh, in the media. Well, there's different ways to approach conflict and what there's a very dramatic story in the McLean's because uh, mm -hmm. there's intense conflict, but the conflict is something else is done with the conflict than is usually done in the reality TV shows. So there's one of when uh, Martin gets on one of the projects he wanted to talk with you about and See if you might be interested in relating mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. some way was a mm -hmm. thing for uh, in Germany of having a, uh, a civic council like is done in Austria uh, mm -hmm. on a topic that's in a major city and they would do coverage of it uh, dramatically and in the outcome whatever the recommendations were they would then in a positive deviant style look for who is handling that well and do further mm -hmm. coverage of those people uh, mm -hmm. as a and it has no official uh it has no official um approval or sponsorship it is just a tv show uh but it is it is uh and it's not journalism in a traditional sense because it's it's designed to to sell rather than to report mm -hmm. on to sell mm -hmm. the idea and to engage people, so that's just mm -hmm. another another approach. Yeah, th th this is this is very fruitful. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I don't think uh, we have any television uh, shows designed for that. The the Watch Out group uh, has done a lot of interactive fiction and even games um, for that, but it's not on a TV setting. It's on a computer setting. Um, it's on an internet setting. But uh, I imagine they have similar goals, and I'll be very happy to mm -hmm. explore this this branch. Okay, great. Uh, a question I had about this uh, stakeholders versus citizens and legislative versus ministries, whatever. Uh, it felt like my impression is historically, the mm -hmm. sunflower movement was about deliberating about. A law which was going to be the the pact, the uh, trade pact with China, uh, and that was a taking that was taking over the citizens were taking over not only the legislative physical space but the legislative function at that time and saying, look, we can do this really well as citizens, mm -hmm. uh, and sort of putting, you know putting the legislature to shame and getting them to start engaging more citizens, whatever. And that's, mm -hmm. that's the genesis of V Taiwan is in that mm -hmm. experience. 
and that mm-hmm. now what I gather from you and uh, and Shu Young is the it's around an eighty twenty of, of, of regulations, eighty percent regulation kind of stuff, twenty mm-hmm. percent mm-hmm. legislative, which is a uh, how did what's the track of evolution that resulted in the shrinkage of legislative attention mm-hmm. uh, and the expansion of regulatory attention in the participatory mm-hmm. process? Right. So um, the person who came to the Gap Zero hackathon and proposed the VTime project uh, is a minister with a portfolio for cyberspace and legal affairs. Uh, and so Mr. Jacqueline Tsai. And so because of, the, of her position, um, by necessity, uh, we need to tackle more administrative rather than um, MPs' um, visions. There are many other uh, movements out, out of the Sunflower movement. V Taiwan is just one out of maybe two hundreds. Um, but uh, so the the uh, civil yeah. constitutional reform, uh, the one that I just did a very quick summary on, is one of the consensus points of the Sunflower Occupy. And so that branch of people uh, and composed of um, again like very high overlap, but but they are they're of a more fundamental um, like constitutional rewrite. Um, uh, um, uh-huh. aspiration, aspiration, that's the word, uh, will we'll, um, want to continue to move power like this way. Uh, but by nature of Jacqueline Tsai's um, position at the time, uh, it necessarily moved uh, kind of back this way, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and and there, there's many other um, movements and sub-movements. There's a um, new party-ish thing that came out of the Occupy, but uh, it fragmented into uh, the New Power Party and um, Socialist Democrats. Uh, And um, again, these two all carry the basic consensus items of the Sunflower Occupy. They need Um, to be brought together with Paul Liss. (laughs) Right. Uh, And and they're all aware. They're all aware. We are all aware of what what each other is doing, actually. Um, But but by nature, if a new party is formed, like the New Power Party, they now are the third uh, largest, who was just five seats uh, in the in the parliament of 135, I think. Uh, so the MPPs are then by necessity um, doing their work uh, within the parliament. Uh, but however, the the Social Democrats who didn't win any single seat uh, are now working on a much more grassroots uh, organization and, um, you know, citizens uh, assembly, but on a township level thing uh, at, uh-huh. at the moment. Uh, and and GovZero, again, is is the, the tools we use are, and, and contribute are all open source. So you see parts of VTOW and components in, in all these movements, right. Right. Uh, but, but we don't actually have control over any of it, but many part of them just drop by our weekly uh, meetups and, yeah. and share their experiences. So, so it is um, by necessity, not, not, not a lot of cohesion because the vital players are all on different positions now. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, well, that's, thanks for complexifying my thinking. No, yeah, but yeah, it's reality. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So hopefully <laughs> yeah, not over complex. The nonlinear history. I was going, huh, how did this how did this linear history happen? You're going, well, that linear history didn't happen. There was much more nonlinear history that happened. Uh, and that's Yeah, so 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 my, my role my role um again as a public servant of public servants is basically to <laughs> to reduce fear, uncertainty and doubt of the professional uh, senior executive career public servants, because during the Occupy, there's, there's really a lot of FUD going on of, of what Occupy actually means uh, within the public service. And so by having a occupier as a digital minister who say, you know, I'm not asking you to do anything and facilitating you to, to realize your potential as public servants, uh, we're, we're reforming um, the affect, uh, the feelings. Uh, of the public service uh, around the word uh, participation. Uh, and so th- I see that as my main role and, and there's many other roles being played by many other players. Mm-hmm. 
Yes, yes, yes. Huh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I am learning so much, not just of the specifics, but of the, uh, the nature of the complex realities, which your the Taiwan's is only one, but I, I, uh, I tend to be usefully reductionist, but still reductionist in a variety of my work and you mm -hmm. help helping me balance that um, mm -hmm. with the realities you deal with. I had, I had, I was kind of having a conversation with one of my other uh, board members a couple of years ago who had spent two years in China, um, mainland China doing the, uh, uh, teaching English, mm -hmm. but engaging a lot with the students. And one of the things that she introduced me to was the mandate of heaven logic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh -huh. And I began to think what an interesting relationship could be painted between public, par sophisticated public participation uh, regimes and mm -hmm. the mandate of heaven mythos because without giving up power, mm -hmm. you can access what the people want and then do it for them uh, mm -hmm. using these participatory processes. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. from your proximity to that worldview, if you mm -hmm. have any thoughts about, oh, that's a good idea, or no, that wouldn't work, or you haven't thought of these seven things or whatever, <laughs> whatever mm -hmm. you might do with that, I'm just curious. Well, uh, certainly. Um, I mean, the the Confucius, Confucius or um, if you're talking about mandate of heaven, is uh, equally Mencius um, thinking. Um, it is what we call uh, min ben or or right citizen based. Uh, it is not democratic because um, right. it is not the rule of the people. It is uh, based on people, and so so um, the ruler of the Confucius. Um, conversation is at the best philosopher kings, uh, but it is not voted. Um, mm -hmm. there, right. there is no mentioning of voting of any kind um, in the Mencius Confucius uh, tradition. Right, and I'm, so I'm, this is, I yeah. understand that, and I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Voting has a very minor place in my own ideology. I'm just curious, mm -hmm. given given the Chinese. The, mm -hmm. the communist Chinese structures, which are, I'm aware that they are hanging behind, hanging in your background you know, mm -hmm. in a very dominant way. There could be things that could happen that would be very messy for Taiwan. Uh, mm -hmm. But within the world of, uh, of China, where there's a lot of interest apparently in mm -hmm. democratic reforms, but not democracy the way the West practices it. Mm -hmm. And I go, mm -hmm. this is democracy in a way that's different from the West, way the West practices it. Uh, mm -hmm. What would it be like? Would, would this be a, a meme that's a selling point for Chinese yeah. people um, who are trying to preserve the Chinese system? Well, I, I'm, so, so I'm uniquely not qualified as a political <laughs> analyst uh, of, <laughs> of the communist China. Uh, just because of my position. Uh, but uh, I think, broadly speaking, uh, they, they also had their constitutional reform not, not too many um, months ago. Um, and their constitutional reform are straight. Um, so, so in Taiwan, Chiang Kai-shek did the same thing. He amended um, the, the legal system so that he can be the president forever. Uh, and so, so we, we saw that dynamic happening um, back when Zhang Heshe was still ruling. And Zhang Heshe also used a lot of Confucius um, and especially Wang Yangming terminologies to paint himself as the Saj uh, that um, is the lighthouse tower, whatever, uh, that embodies um, the, the heaven's mandate and uh, in a quote unquote democracy, um, setting that uh, allows him to uniquely reflect the will of the people. Uh, we, we have all this before in Taiwan. So the rhetoric, I would say, is very, is very similar to say at least. And, uh, right, but it's, um, it's also unreal. Yeah. It's, we know that this is a falsehood. This is a 
a myth in the negative sense and the positive. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as say it's a myth, though, because e even though Zhang Haishek, um, I mean, he has to link to the word democracy, just as um, the Communist Party has to link to Lenin's um, centralized democracy or democratic uh, centralization, right? So um, the, the, the word, maybe you, you would feel um, distorted, uh, are still popularized because of mm -hmm. this rhetoric. And so the right. younger generation raised with the word um, democracy and rule of the people and so on, um, soon discovers once they have free access to information what, what these words really mean. And I would also argue that it then uh, makes the Occupy or the, few, the, the further uh, democratization pro processes uh, much more legitimate because they are using, uh, they, could, they could claim that they are implementing a, a better um, implementation of the core ideas that mm -hmm. are propagated by the myth. Uh, and, and I think this is a important part of the, the dynamic to the distortions that you mentioned, because we see this dynamic in South Korea as well in, in the democratization of the, the Asian countries. Mm -hmm. So there's both a myth, a bastardized myth of democracy and a, uh, a myth of the mandate of heaven, which uh, is is used to often justify uh, rule that is not in any way wise or representative of the public will. Uh, and this is a, uh, from my perspective, this is a realization. This within a top-down structure, if the top-down structure that has no voting in it, or hardly mm -hmm. any voting, or deep power mm -hmm. voting, if the top-down mm -hmm. structure is established in a way that that uh, seeks the will of the people through deliberative activities mm -hmm. of the kind that you and and I are engaged mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. but that is a you don't have to lose your grip on power. You just have to legitimize it and become become the representative and empowerment of the wise voice of the people. You know? <laughs> Anyway, I just, I was curious. Where no, it, it, it is, it is a, so, so yes, I, I completely agree. And um, the, the four pillars of open government are called four pillars precisely because there's tremendous tension uh, between those, those values. Uh, one can use, for example, transparency and accountability to establish this kind of mandate of heaven by saying that a, a ruler um, you know, shares all the information with people and so on, and use participation as an instrumental means, not a value in itself, uh, and um, therefore achieve a, a, a fake um, inclusion. At, at, um, so basically, having accountability um, bastardized in a very top-down way, and then leveraging all these techniques or technologies, but only when convenient. Um, and and we, we see this configuration a lot, actually, in uh, like dictatorship to democracy transitions um, in East Asia. And sometimes it's a recession. Mm. So, um, yeah, I, I would say mm. that, which is why I put trust uh, in, in the center and have those four pillars as the, the service um, of the trust. Mm. Because I, I think it, it could flow both ways this way. But that's because I'm um, a, a Taoist, rather a Confucian. <laughs> and, but, but right, so so it's a different philosophical configuration as well, is what I'm saying. Uh -huh. That's an interesting choice, and you're putting trust in the middle of it. Ah, I uh, one of the things that don't don't change the screen. One of the things that uh, came up during your last little speaking um, was the difference. If you have top-down power, mm -hmm. uh, there are there are status rewards to that, and there are uh, and there are just psychological having power over some people's psychologies. That uh, coercive power, yes, uh, mm -hmm. yes, uh, and and there's also this you know, like financial, material, material benefits 
kind of power. Uh, mm -hmm. And it feels like the, the king or dictator can satisfy their, you know, ceremonial status, live in great wealth, whatever kinds of interests uh, mm -hmm. without basically corrupting the system where it matters for other people. It doesn't cost a lot to support a king, for example, compared yeah, not to at other all. costs not at of all. society. So you could mm -hmm. have a king that was the embodiment mm -hmm. of, or, or a, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Yes, and then you earn back the, the expense through tourism, for example, <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of the monarch. <laughs> well, you have, if you have, if, if you have uh, one quarter of 1% of support of the budget of the country is supporting the monarch and all the rest is fulfilling the ideals of the people and the mm -hmm. will of the people, you have the idealized mandate of heaven situation uh, where the ruler is ruling through the guidance of the people and you know this is the this is the Taoist leader i guess even more <coughs> who he's well and yes people that it is themselves but or anyway so that's, that's right 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 but but that's the constitutional monarchy constitutional monarchy idea and yes, it's still and practiced no, because i'm yeah. i'm removing the voting right I'm, I'm removing that the the i'm saying that this is an inspired i think in the history of greece there was a, one of the, the rulers, the top-down rulers, initiated the demo, original democratic forms. Oh, yeah. A mm -hmm. or somebody. And, and mm -hmm. that kind of leader who establishes a new order uh, that, is, that, is, that maintains somebody at the top in power, but their hold on power is... Anyway, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. we can set that aside. Those are philosophical story, interesting things. I just realized that for me, the thing that's in the middle is the wisdom factor. Mm -hmm, and I know mm -hmm. it's trust is easier to uh, define and sense. And measure and wisdom. quantify. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, yes. wisdom, the wisdom thing is priority for me because mm -hmm. the nature of our decisions in terms of their wisdom or folly Decide, mm -hmm. given the given the level of power humanity now has mm -hmm. uh, we can easily destroy ourselves in any one of one or one or two dozen major ways mm -hmm. uh, all of which are proceeding <laughs> in the wrong direction mm -hmm. and so I go what is if we if we could have a philosopher king that would do the job I go let's go for the philosopher king and offload the, the democracy part of it so the democracy is not my central value but I think the systems are so complex that having multiple viewpoints being integrated somehow has to be part of the puzzle uh, mm -hmm. in order to make wise decisions. And I mm -hmm. know there's no, there's no measure. So I have this definition of, you know, taking into account what needs to be taken into account for long-term broad benefit. That's my, and of course, all those are debatable, just like equality is debatable and mm -hmm, justice mm -hmm. is debatable, but they are, you know, North stars to shoot for and to know that certain ways of doing things mm -hmm. will systematically disable your ability to take into account what needs to be taken into account. And mm -hmm. other ways will inc increase your ability to do that. And if you're always recognizing you're going to miss things all the time, Mm -hmm. You're going to not take into account certain things. So you make your process iterative. So it's picking up the things you missed rather than trying to suppress the things you missed. Mm -hmm. you know, There's a lot of different things that can go into that. But I realize participation, inclusion, accountability, and transparency all serve my goal. <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but it's fascinating. You put trust in the middle. It's something to, to meditate on. It's much more grounded uh, in mm -hmm. the people who are living through it. Right. Uh, I think wisdom um, to in, in my um, mind is a uh, like a, a regulatory idea, uh, like Immanuel Kant, um, like reason, you, you, you know, um, or, or critical thinking or critical appreciation or aesthetics. Um, it, we, we need to hold that in our minds to even begin to, to move, to make moves. Um, but they are not 
uh, like sustainable development goals. They're they're not to to be quantified uh, along the path. They're like north stars, exactly as as you mentioned, um, which is why um, it's not usually appearing in 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 these diagrams that I draw draw because um, a regulatory idea necessarily um, is when you personal. Say regulatory yeah. idea. What do you mean? Um, <clears throat> so regulatory idea. Um, is a um, philosophical um, idea of, of uh, Immanuel Kant. Um, okay. the, Just to let you know, the, I have not philosophically yeah. trained at all. So right, right, <clears throat> and so <clears throat> so the basic um, intuition um, is that um, um, so to quote Kant, um, even if there has never existed a sincere, a completely sincere friend. Sincerity in friendship uh, is an idea that is still required for friendships to to even form. So, so that's the kind of regulatory oh, okay. idea. Thank you. You have to hold it in your mind to mm -hmm. engage in a process, but with the complete awareness that it it can't be ever attained in its pure form, and it's not even directly measurable. Uh, you can't just look at a pair of friends and say, you know, it's their sincerity ratio, um, you know, <laughs> dwindling or, or, or increasing because it's just a regulatory idea. We can always try and measure them, but they're not measurable, really. No, you can measure a lot of proxies, but then, but then mm -hmm. it, it becomes, um, it's proxies, like how transparent, right. how inclusive, how participatory, and so on. <clears throat> yeah, so I, and I'm, my inquiry the wise democracy pattern language is trying to look at what are the dimensions that I can see, the different, the different things that would need to be addressed or taken into account while you're holding this wisdom uh, regulatory idea at a governance level. This is not the wisdom mm -hmm. of individuals. This is, this is the wisdom, the wisdom of crowds, not, not mm -hmm. like the book mm -hmm. says, but, but real wisdom. Uh, of the whole, mm -hmm. how to act. Mm -hmm. My my way of saying is how to how to uh, call forth and uh, and access and engage the wisdom and resourcefulness of the whole on behalf of the whole. Uh, so those and I look. That's part of the way I think. And when I look at what you're doing, I go this this gal's doing it. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, so and that's. I'm just curious how, like this, I have a, I have this uh, page on the sources, sources of wisdom that apply here. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's, there were nine of them and it's not the nine, it's just nine that I could frame and pull out. But mm -hmm. they suggest, from that perspective, they suggest different uh, ways to do things or, or, uh, tweak things that you already have going uh, mm -hmm. it's like one of one of the sources of wisdom is the holistic and systemic sciences mm -hmm. uh, it's like systems thinking and um, ecology uh, mm -hmm. chaos complexity theory uh, mm -hmm. the people who study these have a uh, <laughs> you might have called it knowledge without portfolio <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. Crosses yes. over all sorts of other things implicitly because you're studying basic structures of how the world's put together. Uh, mm -hmm. And for example, in a polis, uh, a polis exercise, to be able to include people like that, to be able to include ethicists, to be able to include people who understand the common ground among all the world's religions, you know people who have deep time perspectives into the past and the future, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, some shamans thrown into the mix. You know, it's like, how do you, uh, the, diff the so different sources of wisdom, people who embody those different sources of wisdom, what would happen if you put a hundred of them into any given polis mm -hmm. to bring their perspective into that and they are throwing their items into the mix they are doing mm -hmm. their voting on different different items, agree, disagree. They are adding a wisdom dimension that wouldn't necessarily be there by only picking the stakeholders. Okay, yes, I, I completely agree. 
So mm -hmm. that's, that's an example of an, an intervention that's specifically designed because of the wisdom factor, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. which would norm, not normally be put in there if you don't have that in mind. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So let's do that. <laughs> I was even thinking you could have your stable of uh, 100 or 200 people from whom you would pick for any given mm -hmm. polis, you could pick people out of that stable to like you could pick mm -hmm. people to advise the Citizen Liberative Council too. They, the deliberation should mm -hmm. have that dimension also, which they often mm -hmm. don't. You, know, you can solve a problem for now and it may be totally harmful to the seventh generation after us, you know. Yeah, yeah, that, I think that's definitely, um, so, so uh, the, the takeaway, one of the takeaways of previous conversation is, is um, the, the scope of, of time, right? Uh, we, we talk about um, seven generations, but also uh, existential threats to even have seven generations down the yes. road um, that requires decisive uh, collective action. And so, um, it, I mean, these two are, are not antithesis of each other. These two are just different zoom in levels of existential um, time frame. And um, I think one part of it is that um, to be inclusive by necessity, um, for example, say there's a, a teenager somewhere who just saw Polis as kind of game and they just voted and contribute one statement, but by nature of highlighting the statement and sending out invitations for them to join a face-to-face -face more deliberative setting and um, also by making available the methodology and toolkits and so on, that participant has the, the potential to be empowered and um, to take this uh, thinking, this wisdom oriented thinking and be more inclusive in their uh, self-organization in their schools or whatever as well. And that's another dimension that I'm um, very focused on is the public um, co-learning um, effect uh, of this kind of rippling out. So um, whereas many other players um, in the current Taiwan political realm, um, um, it's kind of think in a, a more like we need a constitutional reform in the next few years <laughs> um, time frame. I always think of the the next generation, but uh, I think there's nothing fundamentally different or opposite in the ways that we approach things. It's more of the different way that we frame things. Yeah. You mean we, we being everybody or you and me, which, which is the we, what's the we? we the, the, the wisdom factor, as you said, oh. uh, it, it's worth keeping in mind to think long-term more holistically, but it doesn't prevent us from doing short-term interventions uh, as needed, as long as there is a, a mind toward continuing the conversation unnecessarily controlled by the current people who hold the convention is what I mean. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's this thing of think globally and act locally. Think of yeah, right, right. Think long, but in think a time, long term and think right. long term and act now. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Yes, that, that's the, the idea. So, so yeah, the, the creative process starts now, but um, is infinite um, in scope. Your focus. I would say there's an 80 20 thing. It feels like the 80, the 80 is on, well, it's not your decision to do it. That's part of what's intriguing to me. There's a dance between uh, intentional design and emergent design. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and your, you have an 80 percent an emergent 20% intentional design thing going on in what you're doing for all I can tell, uh, mm -hmm. if, if not 90-10 or something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. In terms of addressing, I guess I should just say, what are your, what are your thoughts? The fact that you talk about existential threats means mm -hmm. you're very aware of that dimension and what's going on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh yeah, and that's my center of gravity. Totally, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. there's a way in which I could care less whether we can get our act together locally, if we mm -hmm. can just handle those. Because if we don't handle those, local mm -hmm. will be semi irrelevant. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how do you? And for me, there's there's there is a different ratio. There's more because 
because there's so many emergent dynamics that are uh, that counter taking those things seriously. Mm -hmm. Some based on the way we have evolved as human beings, you know, the, the limits, the limits and urges we have as human beings will often channel us towards short-term, immediate kinds of solutions, which is mm -hmm. one of the weak points of non-deliberative democracy. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, there's a, a hidden agenda here. There's a way I'm trying to figure out what is the collaboration, what kind of collaboration makes sense in that realm hmm. with you? Uh, is that is there is there a, an urge in you to do something with that with existential threats that is wise that utilizes your skills and knowledge uh, that's in addition to what you're mm -hmm. already doing and maybe you have right. knowledge about setting mm -hmm. up emergent systems that can actually address that but I'm I would love to be in conversation with you because I have such gigantic respect for the mm -hmm. uh, intuitional work that you're engaged in and the Taoistic mm -hmm. style you, <laughs> you have <laughs> and that you spread around you. <laughs> That's guess, right. Is there uh, a way to tap that for this other project, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, so to, to uh, go back to the beginning of your, your, Paragraph, <laughs> it, it, right? The the ninety ten thing. Um, so, so I, I see my main role in the intentionality realm as a a spell checker of sorts. Um, so, so people do whatever, uh, but it needs to not cancel each other, right? So, um, and it need to be coherent. Um, in coordinating some way. and picking up some loose ends and whatever. Yeah. So, so I am as I said in the first conversation, if there's if there's this trash that everybody is too busy to take out, I, I take it out. It, it's it's right. not metaphoric. It's it's real. And cool. if there's everybody's too hungry, I order pizza and and things like that. Uh, but I I also do it in the in the ideas and narratives level. So um, if there is um, so it's like a a, a short stop in a baseball game. Uh, if there are any uncaught uh, balls that will um, threaten the, the the playing field, I just go and catch it. But otherwise, I do nothing. So um, that's the the basic idea, and I you think the the look for where the balls are falling. <laughs> right, right, exactly, and and so so I, I, it's not like a traditional architect where where it holds in her mind um, architectural integrity or uh, conceptual integrity, as we say in computer science, but but rather it is uh, integrity of the the functioning. Of the system uh, and is always done in a minimally intrusive way. So, so I, that's that's how I see my role. Um, so it's a purely reactive role. Uh, so if it goes really existential, like the Occupy, the first few days, um, the the cops are are threatening to to go in and um, make everybody go away and so on. There's a lot of intentionality in the counter. Uh, design of the counter surrounding of the cops, um, of the communication, of the ask for help, uh, and so on. Um, but once it's relatively peaceful and self organizing, I, I go back and doing um, things like asking for higher bandwidth live streaming and things like that. So, what, what I'm saying is that it's a proportional to how much existential threat um, the, or, or the organism. Uh, is feeling um, that would determine the uh, intentionality, and it is not a, a given ratio. So at this point in PDIS, I would I'm maybe two percent intentional, right? So so that's that's uh, my situation. And so back to the planet existential thing. Um, I, I think the the sustainable development goals actually is a very good example because the the SDGs they kind of um, capture the uh, non-controversial essence, <laughs> the, the parts that none of the country will, will fight over with, like everybody kind of agree that these are important things. Um, but again, this is not framed as, you know, we have to solve it within the next few years, otherwise we better send spaceships out uh, kind of way. It is a, a more moderate kind of framing 
of the existential, more planetary issues. Um, but by focusing on, on SDG 17, um, almost exclusively in our work, I think the, the same methodology do have potential to uh, escalate into a more direct, um, like conflict prevention or conflict reducing way. And in what Taiwan, of course, which is 17? Uh, the, the 17 is global partnership. Uh, and it focuses on things as mundane as uh, digital opportunity, wide access to, to ICT systems, and all the way to strategies and systems mm -hmm. to enable cross sectoral and multi stakeholder collaboration. So, okay. so it is the, the mo most dynamic of the SDGs and the, the one that basically enables people to focus on particular goals without sacrificing other goals. Uh, it is the, the thing that binds um, the Mm -hmm. admittedly very different focus of economic growth and social and environmental growth uh, together. And, and so that's the, the main position I, I'm speaking about or at, um, but in a way that is um, that could be scaled, I guess, more deeply and more urgently if needs arise. It's just at the moment, for example, climate change and carbon um, footprint and, and like global conflict and, and things like that, uh, we don't yet have a exportable framework uh, for direct uh, action uh, on these things, but not because we don't, we are not prepared for those things. It's just it doesn't arise naturally uh, in my current position. Yeah, I know that um, this is, it's in this direction that I will want to make my contribution to the future conversation in the afternoon and evening conversation in mm -hmm. Seattle. Mm -hmm. You talk about the future. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, what does it mean? Um, what does it mean to apply the knowledge we have in a way that would allow us to survive mm -hmm. for another few millennia at least mm -hmm. um, and part of that is how do we uh, how do we develop the capacity to iteratively digest and reframe our experience and our activities which is what mm -hmm. the, the co-intelligence is about you know intelligence is about maintaining your internal maps in co congruent with the external realities over mm -hmm. and over again, learning, changing those on uh, wisdom is from my perspective, a longer version of that longer term, deeper version of that phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So it is not something you just have. It is something you iteratively work on all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm part of me would love to clone you and have somebody to who has the the Taoistic sensibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, the closest thing I've come to in a a vision of that, so there's actually one current one, an old one, is the uh, <clears throat> the idea of a think tank that looks for stuck points mm. or or missing missing opportunities in existing transformational efforts mm -hmm. uh, where a conversation of some kind from an email to a full-blown major conference uh, mm -hmm. would break the, you know, who should talk to who through what medium uh, about what. Uh, mm -hmm. It would be like acupuncture on the mm -hmm. larger transformational movements mm -hmm. uh, and and what a a think tank of you know a dozen or 80 people who are constantly looking over the activities of constantly redefined transformational transformational agents looking mm -hmm. for those stuck points that could be tweaked uh, mm -hmm. that's that's the uh that's a vision that I never had. I wrote up a, a description of it once, not a proposal, because I don't know how to 
I don't know who would support such a thing or how to move with such a thing or even how to actually do it. It's just a, a vision. And the mm -hmm. other thing is the NGI, the mm -hmm. recognition that these, and, and Steve Waddell specifically mm -hmm. noted the emergence of parallel, uh, of collaborating multi-network, multi-sector, multi-stakeholder, mm -hmm. multi-scale networks mm -hmm. arising around every one of the uh, sustainable development goals. That's right. And mm -hmm. the fact that these are already emerging, suddenly there's the, the Taoist thing of move with the energy that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's energy in those um, we call MS3 uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, networks. And mm -hmm. the fact that they're struggling to work together because they don't, they are, they are uh, self-interest and, uh, and pers own perspective pursuits, all these sectors and, and uh, stakeholders, their tradition is to work on their thing in their way and push their, mm -hmm. their thing operating on their traditions. Uh, hi, Martin. Hi, good morning or good evening. <laughs> good local time. Good local time. <laughs> good, local time. <laughs> That's a good, good way to say it. So let me just finish this and I'll turn it over to you. Mm -hmm. Martin, please uh, move forward. I'll just yeah. chime in. Andre and Martin, it's great to have. What a crowd! Uh, yeah, we earlier we earlier had Margaret, and then she went off. So, anyway, um, so the idea that there is extensive knowledge and expertise and you know know-how in how to work together. Mm -hmm. There's technological, you know, the digital tech and there's human group interaction tech and all this stuff. And those mm -hmm. people don't know about that to a very mm -hmm. large degree. So the helping them gain that knowledge and helping them realize that they are already an emerging form of governance. And we're just mm -hmm. trying to help them do that job better. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And it includes and transcends existing government. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of me feels there are, partly from the stakeholder focus, there mm -hmm. is, that you've got that there's there are lessons to be had mm -hmm. from your work to bring into that mm -hmm. and that collaboration between the Taiwan or just you and, mm -hmm. and the ENGI thing as mm -hmm. a way to upscale in a Taoistic way to the whole, mm -hmm. whole world through mm -hmm. the networks and helping them be able to do their function well. And I'm trying to figure out how to bring the wisdom factor in, but the fact that they're mm -hmm. multi-sector and multi-stakeholder and trying to collaborate, that already covers the number one wisdom generating point that I've got. Mm -hmm. I, figure out how to add in some of the other stuff is icing on the cake with the fact that they're, mm -hmm. they already cover the ground of things that need to be taken into account to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. as well, Anyway, so mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be one of the, you know, it's not exactly the Taiwan because the Taiwan mm -hmm. is intrinsically Taiwan, but mm -hmm. the V Taiwan sensibilities and approach, how can that be woven in with the, emerging network governance thing. I think there's like super high leverage in a realm that's really hard to figure out where transformational leverage is on uh, the kind that we actually need to make it. And I don't have no idea whether we'll make it, but that's a, uh, that's an invitation I'd like to give to you and to the Paul, mm -hmm. the Paul S folks. Uh, mm -hmm. And my last question, which was specifically came up in what you were talking about a little bit earlier, the peop, do you take people out of polis for the subsequent discussions because of how they responded in polis? Does that ever happen? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we send invitations um, to people who um, achieve a high resonance um, in their conversations or Sometimes we just send an invitation to everybody. 
who who we bother say, to, whoa, 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 to. Whoa, whoa, whoa! When you say high resonance yeah. in your conversations, does that mean in polis they are saying things that everybody else is saying, or something? Or everybody in a cluster, at least, is uh -huh. like they are. They embody the the their wow. statements embody the consensus of the groups. Um, that's, yeah, huh. that's we some, do. Yeah, that's, we do say yeah. invitations. There's a group, there's a methodology, uh, synonym, I think I mentioned mm -hmm. it to you before, mm -hmm. uh, that has a group of 10 people who are, who are, there's some problem, like let's, let's solve the housing problem. Okay, so they each, each of the 10 people write their one page mm -hmm. thing about how to solve the housing problem. Then they read mm -hmm. each other's statements and pick one to revise mm -hmm. and revise it. And they do that iterative process several times and supposedly it moves towards a consensus. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, a computer, it's all done online or mm -hmm. on, in, in the system the software, the computer is mm -hmm. tracking whose, whose uh, essay gets picked by the most people mm -hmm. and who picks the essay that most of the other people in the group pick. Mm -hmm. And that person is being identified through the whole process. And if there's, if there's a hundred people, like 10 groups of 10, and they're going to make another group of 10, they pick those people from each of the groups mm -hmm. as embodying the group mind for their group. And mm -hmm. I just realize that you are doing that action in. Yeah. In um, but to be, to be honest, um, it's much easier to just filter out the trolls and send invitation to everybody else rather than <laughs> just setting a, a threshold, uh, which is what we end up doing. Um, in the very beginning of the V Taiwan design, we entertained with the idea. We were still using forum technology then, but the basic idea is the same. We identify the ones that are making original contributions, uh, meaning that they, they raise points that nobody else has raised. And we just invite those people to form a working group. Uh, it soon becomes difficult to subjectively judge originality. Uh, and so then we move to polis uh, and we use resonance, right? The, the general agreement within and globally uh, to surface the agenda. And then we, we entertain the idea of inviting the people who contribute the most um, as picked by polis. But then again, we, we um, settled on the the much easier to operate and in reality, actually not at all prohibitive way of just filter out the, the, the trolls, the, the, the sheer duplicates and the meaningless statements and invite anyone who made a contribution at all, uh, which actually worked pretty well. Uh, and we, we do that for petitions as well. So um, that's our current mode of operation. Um, we, we are not saying that just by nature of pre presenting a statement in a wise way, you automatically uh, are identified as a wise person because it turned out it doesn't work that way. Um, because they could just be reading a statement from the magazine and pasting it or, or whatever, right? Um, and so it, it's easier if we just invite everybody who is not a troll um, to the face-to-face -face, uh, conversations. So, so it's, it's what actually happened historically, but we did entertain with the idea. Interesting. That's part of the intentionality. You're just doing it in a different way now. Yeah. yeah. Both because it seems to work and because it's easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's less energy for everybody, you know, yeah. involved. It's yeah. more fun. <laughs> and, and it's, which makes it more fun, right? It's, <laughs> it's not fun to, to do tedious work, but, but yeah, if we have more extended AI intelligence or whatever, doing the, the, the uh, more complex model, then why not? So we're still open to other models. Okay. Well, I have covered most of the ground that I had and my, my, uh, there's some things I'm saving off for Seattle, but mm -hmm. once again, practically every question that I asked has resulted in a reframing of my understanding so that mm -hmm. the question didn't get, uh, didn't get answered specifically, but was it, it was the wrong question to ask. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Well, it's one never the wrong question. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what the questions question, are for. Yeah. The question, you yeah, just said that. It, it, it points to the space, right? Right. So, sorry. To, it is. 
So you, you gave me a more spacious answer than I expected to yes. a bunch of my questions. I wanted, the final thing I wanted to ask is when and how do you invite general public to participate in V Taiwan deliberations mm -hmm. like Paul S. I mean, I gather mm -hmm. you are do the rolling survey, which generates mm -hmm. more and more stakeholders who should be invited mm -hmm. into the partic mm -hmm. participate. Mm -hmm. But is mm -hmm. there a general public route that says, hey, everybody, anybody wants to show up, mm -hmm. come on down. Uh, mm -hmm. What what exactly is that, you know? Right. So usually it, it, it happens during the convergence of the first diamond. The, the brainstorm, um, by definition, is, is open to the general public. We just make sure the stakeholders here <laughs> are okay are okay here but uh, as i said the cna <clears throat> the central news agency usually send out a um, press release uh, with a link to the current topic so that oh. the general public also has a, a chance to know that that's that's just what it is okay. the cna is syndicated by the major newspapers so that's the brainstorming stage uh, but the invitation so the police usually is around here, right? But the invitation to the face-to-face -face meeting, that is um, everybody from the general public is welcome to participate online, but the offline um, due to state constraints and things like that are usually limited to people who have made contributions uh, along the way. And as I said, sometimes these people, as well as people who offer opinions online, are invited to the second diamond, but that is not guaranteed. It's maybe one in five or something. Right, right, right. Okay, so the CNA is the is the major, uh, is the yeah, major and, and publishing of right. the whole thing is happening. So if you really right. want to come, right, back. right, exactly. And yeah. and we're we're also working, I think, uh, more uh, with the the speaks persons team as well as uh, if there's any ministry that is the host of one particular issue, then the 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 media channel of that particular ministry is also leveraged. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. So, what are you doing here, Martin? <laughs> I, <laughs> Anything you'd like to do? Whatever you'd I like think, to say. I do. think um, I'll just chime in here, um, and uh, in the sense that, um, in regard to the public, um, Audrey, there are like four items I thought uh, I'm, I, at least like I would like to raise, and see um, where we go with them. Uh, the first one is I have been developing a TV project, uh, participation TV project. Mm -hmm. And I'm working with a production company in Germany and one in Switzerland. And last week, I shared my excitement about V Taiwan and what's going on as a participation as a nation that is uh, is raising the standards for participation on a national level there mm -hmm. we have here in europe some some local level participation and it seems it's quite new for for many and some do it with reluctance there's uh, tom already mentioned for alberg has been a model for many other mm -hmm. states in Austria and also in Germany, uh, mainly in Germany, there are other um, in the ministries that are trying to or are doing it. And there's especially a very well-known uh, woman professor who's pushing uh, these so-called civic councils or wisdom councils. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I uh, mentioned that and then she said, oh, Martin, I think it would be good if we first did a documentary before we did the TV participation project. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll share with you the, the, doc, uh, the presentation. And mm -hmm. she asked, um, would I write a treatment so we could present that to Swiss national television? And there's like a fundraising uh, foundation for documentaries. And she said, um, uh, would you do that? And I said, yes. And then I, then I thought it would be great to, in that show, mm -hmm. it's about 50 minutes, there would be like four examples. One in Switzerland on a local level, like a city. Mm -hmm. One's more on a statewide level. And the other one, mm -hmm. the third one I thought would be ideal for Taiwan, the national level. Mm -hmm. 
And mm. maybe there's one uh, that is more on a transnational level, a participation project. So I mm. just wanted to generally just hear you, are you, uh, would that be a possibility if, let's say, mm. the, this actually gets funded, that means that would be in fall, and then we would probably start filming in fall and, and winter time. And, uh, and we would film either a project that has happened or a project that you're working on that mm -hmm. it would film like the whole process. It would be a, a short part of it. That means like about 15 minutes, we would interview you. We would in, and show the project like in a, uh, how do you say, in a fast motion. So, oh, here's the person comes to the office hour or somebody's raising mm -hmm. this issue, and then, mm -hmm. And then it goes, then you have your hackathons and then you move forward mm -hmm. uh, and you go through the diamonds mm -hmm. and so forth uh, until it's actually mm -hmm. something happens with it, you know, and, and introducing mm -hmm. colors and so forth. So generally, I just wanted to ask, is this something uh, that would be possible to do, for example? Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. Um, <clears throat> so if it's involving me as a um, actor in the film, uh, all I ask is either the film itself to be released uh, under Creative Commons or that one of our filming crew can film your filming and release that as Creative Commons. And that's my only condition. And it, everything else sounds just... Okay. Good. I think... Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about the first one, especially because it's Swiss national table. We would have to figure that out, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure the second version is easily. Is sure, easy. sure. Then, then we, we've done that with many directors. Yeah. Okay. So you have, uh, just for me to understand, so you have had film crews coming in from foreign countries and filming the process. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Huge, huge numbers. But, but I, I don't think uh, it followed from the beginning to the end. And mm -hmm. certainly not um, in a fast motion. Mm -hmm. Usually people are interested in one part of it uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they just uh, extrapolate. Um, and uh, Tom in our first meeting has commented that usually they then frame it in the narrative that they're familiar with and kind of miss the <laughs> community creation point. Uh, okay. But we have a lot of uh, films, um, one particularly um, uh, I think more uh, fair or balanced um, report is um, the interactive design award, but it's very short. It's like five minutes. And so- I saw that, yeah. the, Dan yeah, the so, Danish filmmaker. That's right. So, so the shorter yeah. one, um, I think that is the most balanced one of the short films, but the longer yeah. films tend to have a agenda of its own, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. so, so we don't have a, a production at the moment that takes care of both balances. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, is this something that would also be interesting for B Taiwan or just to have a fair presentation of the whole process? Well, the, the thing is that it's never the same process for the same right. case. So, so for okay. example, we, we can't promise that when you come to film in winter, mm -hmm. there will be a case that involves the use of polis because right. maybe for all the cases around the time, we decide polis is not the best idea. Right. And so, so um, if you, you know, expect no specifics, you will always get something. And right. <laughs> I think, okay. I think the community uh, will be happy with that, but if you, uh, expect any specifics, then mm -hmm. we uh, are easier if we go through the historical archives. Okay. <laughs> because you have basically everything streamed as I, as far as I, uh, at, the, at least the and, 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 and Right. And under Creative Commons, so you can use the footage uh, however you want. But like if you have a, a, um, a hackathon, that's not being filmed, is it? Or is it? Well, we're, we're just starting to film our, uh, to live stream our weekly meetups. There is no guarantee that it will continue. Uh, but normally the, the pitch part of the hackathon of uh, pet projects that people are bringing in, in the larger hackathons, those are live streamed as well to ensure that people can participate online to at least understand what, what is there that people want to do. And uh, there's also filmed at a, a final presentation of what's being done at the end of the day in the larger hackathons. And so those are live stream as well, but they're mostly in Mandarin. So 
Um, but but there's an English tour of larger hackathons, uh, but those are not filmed, far as I know. Yeah, I was just thinking for in the archives, would there be enough to represent the whole process uh, on any given issue, or something that would satisfy Martin's desire to represent the whole process? Well, then, then I, I think you have to balance it with many interviews. But uh, I think uh, that's no. not a big problem because if you come to the Gov Zero Summit, which is October 5 to 7, you will pretty much have all the different generations of uh, Occupy and Post Occupy movement on the Gov Zero side. Uh, and so you can you know, use interviews to, to fill in the gaps, so to speak, uh, of whatever you're, you're trying to to film, so so that's the link to the submit mm -hmm. that I just Thanks. pasted here. Yeah. Right, right. And it's in English. Yeah. I think this is the presidential hackathon, or no, no, no. This is the oh. Gov Zero submit. It is okay. Like the the Gov Zero, the shadow government version of the presidential hackathon. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it, it is not state sponsored in any way. But, but you, oh, okay. you'll find most of the Gov Zero actors here. Okay. Um, thank you. Great, um, Audrey. Um, I'll share my screen quickly. Um, sure. Uh, so I will yeah. unshare. Yeah, that would be good. Unshare. Yeah. Good. And uh, let me just check. Perhaps not on the screen, right? There I go. Here it is. Um, okay. Okay, you see it, Audrey, right? Yes. Smarter together. Okay. This is the the interactive live TV show. Um, I'll just um, share it with you and uh, in a quick mode. Um, and you'll, and maybe this could be interesting at some point um, or parts of it. Um, this is an existing we, show that you're thinking of writing along, having a version of, a, a program of? Where this is yes, I think, yeah, it might, as, it might be. It might have some. I. It might have aspects that are interesting in regard to, um, mm -hmm. to to what you're doing, Audrey. So I'll just sure. uh, give it a shot. Um, first of all, um, I th it's it's basically interactive in on different levels. I'll show. I'll go through the the quick part. Uh, the show design. Uh, we have, for example, this is a U.S. issue gun violence. Here in Switzerland, we have something about the healthcare reform because prices uh, prices are rising in the healthcare reform. Mm -hmm. That's a difficult issue, and we also have gender equality. Uh, here in Switzerland, uh, women also are still paid about twenty five percent less mm -hmm. than men in certain areas. And mm -hmm. the show design would be basically through the channels of national media. There would be mm -hmm. uh, on radio, television, web the information on a certain topic. And after that topic, you would also, with that topic, you would also launch, for example, a polis uh, mm -hmm. to get the diversity of the opinions. After mm -hmm. that, um, or during that phase where these different media channels are used, we, you have then um, this uh, random selection, mm -hmm. basically of, uh, let me take this out. Uh, this random selection of the people. Uh, mm -hmm. This is basically the civic council. And these 15 people come together and about two to three days, depending on the, on the complexity of the issue, mm -hmm. uh, they have a basic introduction of the results of polis and also the basic introduction from experts or from policymakers about the situation and where, and where they have Mm, difficult, uh, difficult uh, decisions to make, and where where are the dilemmas? For example, um, for example, in in Europe we have the dilemma about um, the 
issue where a lot of foreigners enter the country from Africa from, and so forth. So we have the refugee situation. So how hard are you on the refugees? How do you uh, close the borders and so forth? So it's a, it's a very difficult issue. Um, and then after that, the, once you have two or three days, these people uh, work on issues and they as 15 people come up with their unanimous recommendations. They, they are like, uh, they have to be like collegial and then they'll say, okay, this is what we think as a group. Uh, that's part of it. Um, you can be, you have, might have differences in a certain part, but as you as a group, you come as one council, you, you know, it's in that sense. Mm -hmm. And then there's the possibility of the media, if they have some recommendations uh, that, for example, just concrete solutions they come up with, and these are already working somewhere in the region, the television would show these positive deviants. So they would show, oh, this is already working in this town. This is how they're doing it. And they, these people are invited, for example. Mm -hmm. So these positive deviants are filmed. It could have also be uh, in other regions, maybe even uh, in, in another country, they have maybe even a solution to a specific uh, problem. And then on the live show, you have, uh, you have an audience, about 100 people maybe, and then you ask the TV audience to use their, um, to have their digital devices or laptop mm -hmm. ready. Um, then what you do would be the first clip that would be, you would present the situations and facts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the, and maybe you have some experts and politicians answer some questions. And then you introduce this civic council. Uh, no, sorry, you, then you introduce the polis results, for example. And then you introduce the civic council. And this civic council, basically, you have maybe two or three people who are probably better than the others in the group to explain things. So they would share their key insights and you would have visually enhanced presentation of the key insights. And then you would also show clips of positive deviance that are already happening. Uh, so that would be the presentation of what these people, these randomly selected people as, as the council would recommend. And then what you then have is the people in the, at home have the possibility to rate their resistance to, the re, to either. There are usually different kinds of solutions. One is more a principle. We, we believe we can do it. That's like a principle. And you have a concrete solution for we need more information, a, a, a website from the government that gives us more data information about the whole refugee thing. We don't know what's going on. That's why we're scared. So, so let's say you have these kinds of recommendations and then the people at home, they rate their level of resistance. And also, you also have the people in the audience that share their resistance. And then those things that are very high in resistance, you automatically throw out. And those things that are maybe, let's say from zero to 10, have an average of four to five resistance, you ask, hey, why is your resistance like five to six? And then people would say, I think it would be important to include um, some agencies here or, or somebody else should take care of the problem. I think this is too complex, too difficult. And then you ask them for solutions. How, what would lower your resistance? So the people can either improve the solutions or offer new solutions. And this could be from people in the studio audience or people from home. So this is, this is the basic idea. There's one software, I think it's called uh, Mentimeter, that you have online immediate response uh, possibilities with, without a... Uh, identification or larger login that would be the, and then um, and then you have like a second round where you have all the new solutions come in and then you have one more resistance measure and then you have the top uh, three or four proposals or ten or five or six proposal depending on the issue and that's it and then you close the show and if it's a show if it's something that is very complex you can have 
two, two or even three shows on the same topic, you know. So that would be something that was, that is the basically TV participation element. And I just wanted to share, just maybe it's interesting, I'll send you, if I'll send you the link to it so you can automatically uh, download it whenever, if you wanna have a look at it more in detail. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's on a Dropbox link. Here mm -hmm. it is. Uh, here. Chat. Here it is. Sorry about that. Okay. There you go. That so that's it, Andre. Um, and um, I'll send the. So that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I stopped sharing the screen, right? No. Well. Or is it still? We can see it's the still chat, sharing. We, we can see the chat, it, right? But it's, it's okay. Then now it's sharing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Awesome. Um, it, and yeah. Um, then there's the, the third topic I wanted um, to ask about. We were. Uh, Margaret, who you just met, and a colleague of Tom and I, Andy, we were thinking about um, working on a proposal for fundraising for, uh, for CII. And we came up with one idea uh, as part of this fundraising proposal is besides supporting Tom and CII and the work, uh, these are, this is a fundraising proposal we would like to send to companies, individuals, or foundations. And there's mm -hmm. two parts in it. One is supporting Tom's work and one is creating like a kind of media channel with, with sharing best practices and so forth or web, creating webinars. So there's mm -hmm. one idea I, while watching and hearing about V Taiwan, I was very en enthusiastic and excited and I said, hmm, um, wouldn't Audrey be interested or V Taiwan or the team interested in people creating like presentations or workshops about the whole process mm -hmm. with photos, images, slideshows. Mm -hmm. And I, as far as my understanding is you have uh, online calls just like this one with other people from other governments and so forth, introducing mm -hmm. them to the whole yeah, yeah, yes, situation. Yes. Right. Right. And yes. I'm, I was just wondering, is this, any interest like people like us from from the outside creating workshops, slideshows and so forth, sharing the process, for example, in Europe or in America, and maybe in a way um, that I'm not sure if it's more accessible, but I'm just thinking of, is this any need or any, is the demand rising for presentations like that, that people would like to know how this works, how the software works uh, and how it could be, implemented in their mm -hmm. culture. It's always this transfer of culture. So that would mm -hmm. be something it's not, uh, you can't, as you said, in one of the calls, you can't transplant it or order it, but you can figure out what will work in our culture and how, or is mm -hmm. this something that, or even raise the question, is this something that would work in our mm -hmm. culture or do we have to change the whole, the way the soil, as you said, and what would mm -hmm. be needed to change as the soil. So. I'm just wondering if this is something of any interest because basically Andy and I would be very enthusiastic and for, mm -hmm. if there would be funds um, mm -hmm. uh, to create workshops and even come to Taiwan maybe a few months and you know mm -hmm. create pictures and do translations whatever is needed and then mm -hmm. uh, and then do present offer webinars and of course Tom is right, writes about it he can even create uh, articles or books or a book about it, uh, or a short book about it, whatever. So I'm just wondering in that direction, what you, what uh, we, we Taiwan and your team have mm -hmm. been, maybe you've 
may have had some thoughts around that. Mm-hmm. So that's my question. Yes, yeah, so, so certainly. Yes. So um, matter of fact, we we had a um, curriculum um, of the process um, for public servants way back before I joined the cabinet. It's a two day um, forum with plenty of workshops uh, and um, a process that uh, we've trained at least, I don't know, a thousand or so of public servants via hands-on training. Um, and that's like the original VTOM process um, back in 2015 and all the way mm-hmm. to early 2016. Uh, most of the materials are in, in Mandarin, uh, but mm-hmm. we, uh, after I became a digital minister, um, we, we started working on uh, a English uh, curriculum of the counterparts because we do get, as you said, a lot of interest from public servants, many of them at the city level. Um, and so we're thinking to deploy uh, such a workshop training. It will be just six hours. It will be a, a bridged version. Um, first, we will do a trial run in, in Taipei uh, with the public servants who are well versed in English uh, here, just to to move one variable at a time, and then uh, hold a training. I think late May um, in in New York City uh, with the Civic Hall people. We are also thinking to do something like that in Ottawa um, around the four or fifty, but it's not finalized yet. Uh, at the end of the year, around November, I think. Uh, so that's the two engagements that we're, we're thinking about. Um, so, so by nature of our work, they will have full documentaries, but we are not yet uh, editing them. So, so that's, to, to answer your question, we will have an English course curriculum at the end of May, uh, around May 20-ish. Uh, and uh, we will keep perfecting it, uh, or whatever perfecting means, uh, till to <laughs> November ish, yeah. Uh, but that's that's more of a um, one part of like like it will be a a brief introduction of the the two diamonds and a practice that goes through perhaps this these parts of the two diamonds and perhaps a little bit here. But it will mm-hmm. not be the the complete experience, which will require two days uh, from our experience. Uh, and so that's the material that we will have. And so if you're interested, again, we can collaborate on many ways. So I can hand you all the raw material and you can do, do editing. That's one way. Or you can um, book one of the, the possible um, teams um, of public servants interest in this kind of training and document the whole process. Maybe we can fly to Europe. That's a, another part of it. Or you can come to Taiwan and... Uh, capture the whole process and also interview some community members and rely on translations. So, so we can uh, make whatever way that we want, but we're open to collaboration in any of the, the three or four uh, different ways of collaboration. Mm-hmm. So basically you are training people uh, in, in your, from your team basically to do these workshops, prepare them, and so they can do these workshops around the world wherever is needed. So this would be like a right. starting point now in May and November for, to, to give it to start and to start improving the material. And then offer yes, and, and, and we, will, we will focus on the tools at the middle of the diamond um, right. called uh, right, so called uh, issue based mapping is the code name mm-hmm. for it. Um, mm-hmm. and um, it will be um, very hands on, and we will use concrete, maybe mock subjects that the audience cares about to go through part of the process together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, okay, interesting, interesting. I'm, I'm wondering, um so uh, one, one possibility would be, to, would be to take part at one of these workshops in May mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and see how you do it. And then, mm-hmm. and then see, uh, oh, uh, we would like to do this, introduce the material. And even if we think there's some material missing, we would, we would ask you for it or come to Taiwan and complete and do the extra material which is needed. 
and so forth. And mm -hmm. then, uh, and then we could do these workshops or so if, if there's the demand is high. So it could, sure, sure, sure. just yeah. as a scenario, let's say there are, there's some, someone in London or in England that says, Oh, there's this V Taiwan. Is there anybody in Europe who can do this workshop? Would there mm -hmm. be, could, do you think there could be a scenario like Andy could do that workshop in London for you? Yes, certainly. Uh, I mean, the Nesta people are already de facto doing this. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the Nesta think tank uh, mm -hmm. has done a very thorough review of the V-Taiwan process circa like 2016, uh, early 2016. And so they've been spreading the, the, the word and the process in, in many different settings that I don't even have a very accurate track of. So that, that's already happening is what I'm saying. Okay. And Nesta is based in? Uh, London. Ah, they're in London. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. Um, well, thank right. you. Right, and, and uh, the, okay. the, the upcoming New York one, it, we're still working on this, but, but here is the working Google document that uh, lists the, about six hours um, of the parts uh, that is, um, well, well, it goes into too much detail than we can um, go into, but that, that is the general format of a workshop structured uh, with the primary audience being public servants, but also people from other sectors are welcome to join. And in fact, we think it works better if there's a mixture of private and uh, civil society and the public sector. Okay, let me see if I got that. Oh. Okay, okay. Is this the Joint Library of Humanities? No, that's the other one, right? No, 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 no. Th no this is the, the New York curriculum that, that we're planning. Okay, here it is. Oh, there's the, okay, working title. I got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, uh, government-led okay. collaboration workshop for public policy co-creation. Cool, yeah. cool. I have that. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I think I think Andy and I would both be excited doing the kind of work like this, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, the fourth issue would be um, which I wanted to ask you. Um, mm -hmm. We're basically um, CIA has been funding has been funded basically by I think Tom. You do once or twice a year. You do some fundraising. That, that basically mm -hmm. covers the basic cost, living costs of town. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, Audrey, uh, if, mm -hmm. you, if you have any, you know, like contacts you think, or especially in the US and Silicon Valley that might be interested or might be, have a budget for, for, for organizations like CII that mm -hmm. might want to, might be interested in supporting organizations that are doing work like Tom is doing and or we are doing. Mm -hmm. let's say if we had a larger budget we could come to Taiwan and or go easily to New York City and watch the do the work be at the workshop or do extra filming in the Taiwan and so mm -hmm. forth so I'm as just it is wondering. I have to think twice about going to Seattle <laughs> <laughs> right and I'm just wondering if you have any ideas or any uh, thoughts about that or contacts to Silicon Valley around that uh, I mean, mm -hmm. we would appreciate some kind of links. Yeah. Sure. Um, and, yes. And, um, yeah. And I have a document so, that yes, we just completed a month ago. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I'll just share you the link so you know this is the work. This is, this is, um, I had a document, sorry. Yeah, here it is. Mm -hmm. Here, you know. And you're providing a link. You're much faster, Audrey. <laughs> what? Really fast. It's, it's great. It's great. Yeah, I just noticed how fast you are while I'm doing it myself. Okay. That would be the link right. to the document, which is about the work and, and the fundraising stuff. Right. So um, the, yeah, if, yeah, this is the Venn diagram. Um, yeah, I, I've read this. Before, so in in any case, um, yeah, the the answer is, is several fold. Um, I I do have um, a lot of uh, friends uh, in the the kind of civic tech world. Um, right. So if you you frame yourself as a a technology amplifier or enabler, 
uh, by by far the largest networks, um, aside from the usual uh, suspects, Google, Microsoft, um, Facebook, and and friends, uh, are this network called the Omedia network, um, hmm. and uh, and and Omedia is very interesting because they they don't directly invest <clears throat> or put grants in very small ish organizations. But they put their work into intermediaries like my society in the UK um, and and many others. So um, the Omedia <clears throat> extended network, like Co for America and things like that, uh, do have a lot of um, um, different grants and different supporting uh, platforms for for end of us like this. But I don't have a very close track of their extended networks. But it's all in the Omedia uh, okay. public. Um, website so that's one part of it uh and uh apply for loans from omedia or for, for grants from omedia can you I think you you can but but the, but they are you you can but it's it's generally very very large amount so it was a it was a plan to to kind of serve as an intermediary they're like uh investing or mm -hmm. putting grants to intermediary who then distribute this uh, money to um in a more coordinated fashion uh, to to effect some synergy uh, as the saying go. Um, so that's the the Omedia's um, main idea. Uh, and of course, the Personal Democracy Forum folks, the New York folks, um, they also have mm, pretty good um, sponsorship. But these are all from technology companies. Um, I, I understand that um, there's Google Org, there's the Civic Tech part of Microsoft. So, so all those Silicon Valley huge companies, they, they have an arm toward this kind of community work. Um, but I, I don't know the criteria. I haven't interacted with it, with their investment arm or grant arm directly. I mostly right, work right. with their technology right. arm. But, but, mm -hmm. but there's one arm uh, in each of those huge um, companies uh, at, at this point. And uh, what else? Um, there's the, the larger impact investing network. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're talking with AVPN, which is the uh, Asian Venture Philanthropy Network, but they focus their work on impact investing around Asia. But I'm sure that right. there's um, their, their equivalents in other parts of the world. But then you have to kind of um, frame yourself as a um, enabler for, for social innovation. Um, in, the, in the sense that you, you make social enterprises and CSOs function on a higher level due to these um, technologies or these uh, ways of working, in which case it will be built as a process innovation. And that will, um, that, that's the threshold for, for entering the venture philanthropy uh, mm -hmm. network. Um, so what else? Um, there's many other partisan uh, entities, um, the National what, Democratic Institute or something like that. Um, there's one for major parties um, in many other countries as well. But I, because of my work, I can't really interact with them anymore. Uh, and what else? Um, that's pretty much it, actually. That's, mm -hmm. that's the extent that I know of. Are there individuals you know of, um, in, individuals of wealth, as they say, rich people who uh, who this kind of thing, I mean, you know, you know a lot about my kind of thinking and the kinds of innovations that I focus on at this point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you know anybody uh, who has, you know, there's, there's people, millionaires, billionaires, who choose to create some impact relatively directly. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And are, do you, does anybody come to mind who is like that, who, since I'm kind well, of out of the box, I'm not a I'm not an easily <laughs> an easily described innovator. So the so people who might go, oh, that's interesting. Tell me more, kind of. Right. Um, so along the way, um, like in here in Taiwan, a lot of Gov Zero grants are, are done by individually wealthy people, uh, mm -hmm. and they kind of form a a kind of angel investment club um, and focus on democracy. But I think that is very particularly Taiwan thing because mm -hmm. you know when when they were uh, when they they were made rich 
uh, Taiwan wasn't even a democracy, right? So, so they they channel their a lot of their their wealth into the continued democratization process. I I don't know um, a equivalent <laughs> in in the in the right. developed world <laughs> of of old democracies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's a thresh thing called threshold, which is a similar network of wealthy people that have a foundation branch, but mostly are hey, Joe, if you looked at this, this is an interesting thing you might be interested in kind of network, but their, their center of gravity is progressive. It may or may not embrace wildly democratic things like ours. Right, and, and there's, there's this, this Media Lab uh, network uh, that looks at like what they call extended intelligence, quote unquote. Um, it's mainly a Joy Ito thing, but I think I learned that from, from Sandy, um, Alex Pentland, and they're, they're all computer science-ish people around Media Lab, but focus on bringing the human side out um, and um, focus on the existential issues that you are also focused on, but from a how do we make humanity itself less selfish through intervention of artificial intelligence and extended intelligence, um, like borderline transhumanist uh, uh, angle. And I, I'm not exactly sure how robotics and your work mix, but <laughs> it, it actually makes a lot. <laughs> There's parts from effective computing, from playful systems, from the human dynamics group, which are all media lab um, things. And they get their sponsorship from like Lego, of all places uh, and, and things like that. So, so they're kind of like a bridge between the, the, the thought leaders um, or, or thought wisdom leaders and the, the Lego-ish companies and, and try to find synergies between those. So that's another network that I'm uh, not intimately familiar, but am aware that they're doing a lot of these um, catalyst work that connect mm -hmm. um, rich companies and the social impacts they could have had uh, with the leading thinkers. Uh, so that's another network. And Audrey, Media is that based in MIT? The, is that yeah, the, the MIT Media Lab, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, okay, great. Hey, thank you so much, Audrey. I'm, those were my four points. Great. Mm -hmm. great. I so. think. <laughs> We have made it walk as far as I can go. That's what this is mm -hmm. three hours. Gee, I can't even make the next half hour like I did the first time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, no, it's, it's just fine. So, uh, Martin, do do you have any other points you want to? No, I'm, questions I'm, I think I, I I was I'm I was glad to hear your uh, response around the workshops. I think that is very interesting and uh, and. Um, and I think there's quite a lot, a lot of interest. I have this professor, political science professor who works for an uh, institution of the German government. It's called, uh, mm -hmm. Inter I think it's called Institute for Advanced Sustainability Studies. And she's very yeah. interested in the work of B Taiwan. So um, mm -hmm. if, if you have ever a schedule coming to Europe, you know, sharing the process, I'll share the process, I'll tell her that you're in New York and so forth. Uh, mm -hmm. And share that one document, and uh, and then I will. Um, and she would, I'm sure, she would want to invite you or one of your colleagues who to the mm -hmm. institute based near Berlin, in Potsdam. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. because they are working on different issues in regard to uh, bringing in participation into the government, including technology and all these different things that. And so forth. They're like a, a, a well-funded think tank or institution with a lot of academics, mainly uh, academics. Um, <coughs> they, they would be very interesting. So okay, well, sure, yeah. Let, let's carry on this conversation over email. And um, I mean, uh, the my trips to Europe. I don't have anything booked yet, but uh, Shuyang goes to Europe. Um, very frequently in the past few months. So okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find someone. Yeah. yeah, that would be great. If uh, I can mm -hmm. also write Shu, Shu Yang to, to let mm -hmm. me know if she's traveling and then she can, mm -hmm. of course, mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be ideal. Great. Turns out, awesome. turns out Audrey is 
relatively fluent as a reader of German. Mm -hmm. So it's an interesting. Well, potential. yeah, like like ten years old level fluent, but yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I stay I stay for a year uh, in 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 Zagland, uh, in uh, when my yes. dad was doing his PhD in the Zagland University. Um, oh, so okay. it, 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 it's very rusty now, so, but I, I still uh, read and uh, a little bit of original German material, but, okay. but yeah, but, but I, I think it's, it's okay if you just send me uh, materials in, in Deutsch, I will probably be able to read. Yeah. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. Great, that's good to know. <laughs> I just noticed hey. one, go ahead, finish your... I'm finished. Okay. One other thing on my note, my my page of questions <laughs> that, I, mm. that I had before this, mm -hmm. you know, trying to pick up from all different places. Uh, sure. One of the things that I have found different in my thinking from most of the other democracy thinkers is specifically regarding the issue of a focus on diversity versus a focus on numbers. Yes. You know, the, the, like public opinion, surveys and elections and all these things focus mm -hmm. on the number of people and that from mm -hmm. my theory that's a natural focus when you have a a competitive uh a competitive scene where the more the more soldiers in your army or the more money you have whatever this makes the difference and to be able if you're going to have a representative uh group of people to make a decision you need to and you're going to say this is a cross-section of the population and all right. that you need to have the right number of black people the right number of white people the right number of asian people mm -hmm. whatever uh and when you're dealing with diversity not demographic diversity which is what the word means to most people nowadays it seems but mm -hmm. the full range of you know cognitive diversity experiential diversity mm -hmm. all diversity if you're are different mm -hmm. perspectives if you're trip is trying to generate wisdom out of diversity if you have special ways of helping people who are very diverse come together mm -hmm. in various ways the mm -hmm. numbers are borderline irrelevant and i found mm -hmm. in talking i can't remember whether it was you or um or shu yang that mm -hmm. the that if you have the, the same votes, um, you know, or the well, you know, the agree or disagree things in Paulus. Right, right, then right. Then, up, then it disappears. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah. one point. So you're, it's reducing the, the system to its diversity. And the, mm -hmm. I think it's Ashby's law, the, the solution work that you're doing must have the diversity in it that exists in the problem you're trying to, system you're trying to solve. Uh, the focus on diversity and integrating diverse perspectives mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. fundamentally different from the numbers perspective. And I don't know if you have, if you have or run across, you're a more trained theoretician than I am, if you've run across theory about this, because uh, I don't know, I have barely articulated it in my own writings, but it seems a fundamental paradigm shift in participatory deliberative activities to think that way mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah um I, I don't have um any um so i think it is a a more of a emphasis than anything else it, it's not like we can suddenly discover the spectrum of diversity without there being a base of people uh, to to start with, right? So so there has to be a little bit of both, um, both on the number of people uh, and the diversity it could surface. But it is true that if we choose to ignore the duplicates, then um, the the face of the crowd is different as opposed to if we want to emphasize the uh, relative numbers. So it will look very different. And I think it is the conscious design decision. Of of Polis of Colin to to do that, and and I think Colin um, wasn't even a, a, a professional programmer to start with. 
I think he taught taught civics in senior high school or something, Habermas and stuff. So so he he kind of learned programming to realize his um, political vision. And so so I think Colin um, is more suited than than me to to explain the choice of uh, the police uh, system. Mm. Uh, there there's this person uh, Yves Saint Omer, a a French um, theorist. Uh, mm-hmm. and widely um, regarded as one of the leading thinkers around um, participatory budgeting and, and things like that. Uh, and I, I read one of his papers. I think it's actually not this one, but it's, it's very close. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and where he argues about where, where does this representation idea actually came from. And um, he was arguing that the, the proxy representation through representative democracy or through the you know numbers uh, based uh, representation um, could be extended uh, to actually more um, heterogeneous kind of way and so it's not exactly this paper that I'm looking for but but it is a a starting point uh, and yeah I, I had long talks with with Eve. Uh, around the different um, ideas of representation. And that is, in fact, where I get this word representation um, mm-hmm. as, as defined by how to capture the, the whole systems uh, from which those diversities occur uh, by presenting as much as possible the original proposer or petitioner or stakeholders point of view instead of having one person to speak on behalf of a focus group, for example. Um, and so it, it entails a different design of space, and which is why they're insisting on live streaming or at least on the video recording or at least a transcript recording, because only through the um, conversational context can we resurface the, the presentation uh, around the time where the dialogue happens, which in turn outlines the, the more holistic and not individual uh, mm-hmm. stake-based conversation. And so this is a representation of people, but not a representation of people and, mm-hmm. and so on. So, mm-hmm. so, so yeah, I, I would um, encourage uh, you to, to explore a little bit of Eve's work because I, I borrow a lot of words from, from his work. Okay, yeah. I will check that out. I just realized mm-hmm. one of the challenges in diversity-based councils uh, is the definition, because diversity is infinite. Uh, mm-hmm. Every entity, every person is unique, uh, and there are, every entity has multiple infinite dimensions. So what, <laughs> which standard are you going to use? Demographics is a great s- starting point, but it's barely mm-hmm. scratches the surface of diversity that's important. Uh, and you just gave your your mention of the merger of of uh, the numbers approach and the diversity approach in the sense that if you have a way to extract the relevant diversity from a group, the bigger the group is, the more adequate you will have the represent- the, the uh, uh, diversity represented from within that group, uh, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I haven't thought about particularly. Mm-hmm. And that's what Paulus is particularly skilled to say use an incorrect words particularly skilled at, at presenting as you can get lots of people and right it cancels yeah. out exactly people. exactly yeah the the uh, intuition here is that we use sampling mechanism because we can't deal with large number of people uh, but if we can deal with large number of people then the, the territory is better than the map so to speak the the, the population is better than the sample um, and we're, we're not there yet, but that's the intuition. Yeah. <laughs> huh. yeah, and I'm still trying to understand the difference. One of my big realizations, I think I told you, was that mm-hmm. the fact that people, when people in Polis, many people, not all people, when many people in Polis mm-hmm. mark disagree, they mm-hmm. will then submit an item that is their proposal for resolving their disagreement. 
adding yeah, yeah, their yeah, thing yeah, into the yes. mix. So there's a funny way yes. in which <clears throat> it mimics face-to-face -face deliberations on yes. to do that. Yes. And that was a revelation for me. And I go, what is, what is the fundamental difference between Paul this and face-to-face -face deliberations? And I've, I've well, there's much, much, there's much, much less bandwidth, right? <laughs> there, there's much less bandwidth, but, but that's what the Holopolis is trying to, to explore. What if we can add much more bandwidth uh, by having synthetic personalities um, that speak as a face to the group in an interactive way as kind of a game uh, in augmented or virtual reality through chatbots or through other kind of extended intelligence um, forms. So, so that's the main question Shu Yang is exploring. It's, it's very speculative design, um, but, but that's to bridge the, the two dimensions, right? In face-to-face, -face, it's very easy to, to just sketch a model and get people to look at my perspective by using the whiteboard or using a, a Lego, why not, or whatever else. But there is nothing theoretically preventing us to do this over the internet. It's just the technology isn't quite there yet. So, so what if we just consciously uh, push the technology toward face-to-face um, -face deliberation, but do it in a way that could be asynchronous, meaning that we just have a conversation with whomever that's online, but our conversation becomes synthetic personalities that right. other people can carry on the conversation with. That's the, the intuition. That's related to, but somewhat different from what I'm looking at and I'm mm -hmm. extracting meaning from it, but want to refocus it. There's, okay. um, <clears throat> in the polis, I guess, what the interaction is based on is these restrictively brief statements. Yes. Uh, and in face, I'm trying to figure out what's the difference in the deliberative quality. Uh, and to a certain extent, your the idea of making um, if you have really responsive uh, avatars uh, that are really representative avatars, you can get facial expressions and all that emotions and mm -hmm. all that that dimension of mm -hmm. it, uh, which may or may not be cognitively important, but at the very least. Mm -hmm in a face-to-face -face deliberation, somebody is giving a fuller statement of whatever it is that they mm -hmm. are contributing and people are yes. responding to that level of detail and complexity with their that's own correct. version of detail and complexity. And that mm -hmm. that's an advantage that face-to-face -face deliberation has from a deliberative mm -hmm. quality perspective. And yes there's a streamlining oversimplification, but it offers this consensus extracting power. Uh, yeah, and I guess there's, and that bumps into another thing that I suggested in my earlier 10 page thing that we haven't talked about, but wondering if like in Wikipedia, there's discussion dimension to each page Mm -hmm. which is not on the front. The front is just the statement, the mm -hmm. consensus, so far consensus statement is. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was wondering what it would be like in Paulus to have in any statement in Paulus, there's a tag you can poke that will take you to a discussion space about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a way in which I originally said, oh, well, that starts to produce the level of, of the substance that regular deliberation has. But if it's not facilitated, it starts to introduce the bullshit that Polis was explicitly mm -hmm. designed to get rid of. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Uh, the, the, the thing is, well, the, the thing is, is, is twofold. The, the one that I was exploring, Holopolis, was that the face-to-face -face, uh, magic holopolis? required re required their yeah, holopolis? holopolis. <laughs> yeah, a, 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 a more a more ho holo, <laughs> right? A more more holographic. Okay. Holos, 
a holo status also a post. Right, right, right. 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 So, <laughs> yeah, like so, so Shuyang was, <laughs> right, so Shuyang okay. was exploring from three angles, right, for the virtual reality okay. angle. Um, at where it adds dimension to the current police conversation, the conversational bot angle, uh, where it synthesizes personality um, and make it more fun to to go into more depth, and the mixed reality uh, part where it makes it possible to talk uh, around concrete, um, such as I don't know urban planning or whatever projects while still being face-to-face, -face, basically overlaying the online conversation with a face-to-face -face, um, deliberation. Um, and so, so these are the angles that, that she's uh, exploring. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's the part that kind of bridges um, what we call the cyber system versus the physical system. But, but you're talking about something else. You're talking about um, if you want to um, make it so that each statement um, can be more fully explored in a more conflict-resolving way um, in a facilitated conversation. Um, and the challenge here is um, that it, it, in computer science terms, it requires a, a user agent that can speak on behalf of the user because the user doesn't have the time for um, exploring in these steps to thousands of statements or commentaries. It is necessary for the user to, to be enabled or extended in some way uh, so that their user agent can, can negotiate within this space like their secretary and surface the main parts that require their cognitive import. Otherwise it doesn't scale and you go back to the place where the trolls with the most time wins the conversation. And so the, the, the traditional way to resolve this through face-to-face -face is by limiting the number of participants and have high quality facilitators, uh, human facilitators. So that's the traditional solution. And, and what we're, we're exploring here is something else. It's to make facilitator distributed so that each participant has a micro facilitating power, um, currently only through voting and proposing statements but maybe um, more proactively so that their collective facilitating power is equal to a, a well-trained human facilitator. And we're very far from that yet, but it's a very different um, attack angle uh, to the same uh, problem is what I'm saying. So this is another version, like I was mentioned to Cohen earlier, I can imagine mm -hmm. uh, where the, the discussion space uh, is another version of polis mm -hmm. where people, but in this case, it is a, um, anybody can enter a point to consider. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is the points to consider are uh, thrown up. When you go to click on the discussion section, uh, mm -hmm. you get a, let's say, four points to consider that you rate, mm -hmm. and then it shows you what everybody has rated in order mm -hmm. of how, uh, how many people rated it kind of. So you're, mm -hmm. you're wanting to get, you're going there primarily to get more information and see mm -hmm. what other people may be missing so you can add it in. Mm -hmm. So the, the software is by, throwing up random statements that have already been made, it is, it is uh, creating a neutral rating space uh, mm -hmm. and then showing you the things that are currently highly rated and then you can mm -hmm. put in your two cents and it enters into that system uh, mm -hmm. so that somebody who comes can go through the quick motions of rating these things and then get the mm -hmm. top ones, which will educate them quickly about what's going mm -hmm. on with the topic without there mm -hmm. being the trolls able to surface mm -hmm. visibly. Mm -hmm. That's an approach I can imagine. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and oh, yes. And I guess part of the problem, I keep thinking of Wikipedia and Wikipedia has these discussions. Mm -hmm. Wikipedia has this, you know, background community that's handling all this stuff. And I go, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's this entity that just sits here and Paulus is something that comes and goes. It doesn't have, 
it doesn't have the capacity because of its temporariness to build mm -hmm. a level of community that could facilitate it, you know, in this level of detail. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, yes, the so which is why before the police, there always has to have a, a community. It could be stakeholder. It could be the state power, a binding power that brings people together. It could be something. And uh, the continuity of the community um, as we started discussing in the very first call, is actually the, the weekly hackathons, it's actually the online channels of communication and so on. It's the Gov Zero backbone, uh, without which uh, I, I don't think any of this will result in anything that is uh, more than a, a incremental way of brainstorming. So, so, so people by participation in one of those smaller games, um, as I said, end up learning about the toolkit of thinking and end up uh, feeling that they can contribute more to the progress of this uh, evidently non-perfect um, community, and then is motivated to jump into this this cone, this gap to help filling it. So, so that's the recruitment, the meta recruitment uh, procedure, which is why I keep referring to those social issues as quote unquote excuses uh, for for engagement. Yeah, right, right your big picture view again okay well i'm yeah i have been uh sufficiently complexified on that question hmm. <laughs> okay so i can awesome. probably wrap up okay well that's you great so you, you yeah. will you send out your link when you get it for this thing or should i send out you mean the, the recording recorded, or yeah. i've recorded it yeah recorded it. yeah no i just recorded the voice so i still rely oh. on your side of recording for the screen and everything oh okay uh and and i i've i've already published the the conversation uh of shu yang and you and i um so uh, from the previous call but we haven't got around to make a transcript of that yet um okay. so yeah all right so as soon as you you upload it, uh, we'll put it to the YouTube channel. Okay. Cool. I think we're there. Blessings on the so, journey. I'm yeah, value, yes. value the connection with you immensely. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. More later. So, save yeah. Your, so, have yeah. your chat if you want it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, already done. Um, so, yeah, have a good local time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Andre. It was Cheers. wonderful. Thank you for everything. Bye bye. Say chat. So, what do you think, Martin? Isn't this an existential trip and a half? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. I mean. Audrey has time. Uh, uh, this was there's this kind of uh, there's there's like both in it. Um, um, yeah, I'm still wondering, you know, in the sense. Um, Um...